Uh, hello, my name is Alien, and today I'm uh, facilitating the third of three sessions of my game Against the Dark Conspiracy. Um, this is a game in which the players confront, uh, in this iteration, a vampire conspiracy, uh, while uh, the players play uh, burned spies and generally, you know, people from the shadow world. Uh, this game, like most of my online games, is organised through the Gauntlet RPG Community's online calendar. If you don't know about the Gauntlet, then we would encourage you to search gauntlet-rpg, where you'll find all kinds of stuff. Uh, and, and if you'd like to support it, then there is a Patreon that we would welcome you joining. Uh, that Patreon uh, supports our, our publishing efforts, uh, as well as all the uh, backroom work that keeps the community rolling. Uh, and if you, back, if you become a patron at a certain level, then you get priority access to games like this. So we hope that encourages you. Um, I'm not going to go into a great deal of introduction at this point. I'm simply going to ask the players. We're missing a fourth player. Uh, he had he's had his vaccination today, his first vaccination. So um, so he's he's taking time out for that. Uh, I, strangely, the reason this is not a four four part series is that I had my vaccination when we should have had a first session. So uh, let me ask the players to introduce themselves, say hello, tell me their pronouns, and tell me about their character. So let me go left to right. Jason, say hello and tell us about Christian. Yeah, I'm Jason. I use he, him pronouns, as does Christian Okafor. He is a provocateur, so he's good at disguise. He's, he's got a sharp eye. He's got intuition. Um, he, uh, he's from Nigeria originally, uh, was burned by MI6, uh, found out they were involved with the vampire conspiracy. And uh, let's see, his, uh, he's got his brother in our game. His brother's name is Sunday. He's a uh, drug smuggler. And uh, he is of the crew. He has a crush on Sophia, who's not here right now. But, and uh, he has an on-again, off-again romantic relationship with Devereaux, but he kind of keeps her at arm's, arm's length. Arms, is that the phrase? Whatever. That's it. Thank you. Uh, and uh, last session... Uh, Christian pretended to be his brother Sunday, didn't he? Must yeah. find a way to bind that into today's plot. Okay, Matthew, say hello and tell us about Devereaux Sinclair. Hi, I'm Matthew. I use he, him pronouns, and I play, today I'm playing Devereaux Sinclair using she and her pronouns. Devereaux is a former CIA operative who specialized in infiltration and intrusion, um, um, but she's also good with the guns and the fighting. Um, yeah, she has a daughter, uh, her name is Adelaide, she's in college right now, um, and at this time of the year, she's probably going on her, you know, big, you know, mid midterm, like, European trip or something, so let's see how that comes into play. Uh, yeah, got to try and get, got to try at least get each NPC <laughs> on screen. Um, uh, it would help if you wanted to throw them under a bus, folks. Um, and finally, Abs, uh, say hello and tell us about Mick Cornwall. Uh, hi, I'm Abs, he, him pronouns, uh, and I'm playing Mick Cornwall, also he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm a disheveled Antipodean in real life and in game. Uh, Mick was uh, worked in signals intelligence and burnt himself out. Um, he felt like he wasn't doing the right thing and wasn't having any fun, headed off to Europe to find some of that fell in with some eco-terrorists and um, privacy advocates, um, very gray area, tried to support them, ended up um, with the crew, uh, still kind of looking for excitement, still trying to do the right thing, not sure he's really achieving any of them. He's quite good at digital skills, digital intrusion. Um, he's good at research and people handling. Um, and yeah, that's Mick. Thank you. Um, so just to remind us all where we got to last time, uh, you you picked up a rumor about a uh, some kind of ancient blood fountain or on an island uh, somewhere somewhere off the Balkans, um, uh, owned by a Balkan war criminal. Uh, and uh, as far as you know, Devereaux, and our absent player today, Sophia, our absent character, Sophia, uh, blew that up, destroyed it. 
before you made a swift escape. Uh, but uh, as I've said, Christian was pretending to be his brother. So I can't imagine the conspiracy is not going to be interested in that. Um, and it is unclear whether the woman that uh, Devereaux and Sophia met in the grotto where this fountain existed, who was clearly a vampire, is in fact Cat Houllier, um, Sophie's most recent paramour. Uh, what I will tell you is that when you get back to the hotel stroke safe house before you make a, a rapid escape from uh, the Balkans, is that Cat Houllier is nowhere in sight. Um, and I want to make sure that, that you picked up on, on what I showed you last time, which is that um, though you can set a vulnerability for uh, a vampire as running water, that is not a barrier, it is a deterrent, okay? Um, just so we're clear about that. Um, I did forget at the start to say that my pronouns are he, him, and also to remind us all that we're playing with, I played with these people so much that I keep forgetting to say, but we are playing with a set of safety tools, we're playing with lines and veils uh, and the X card. The open door is available if, if you need to step away from the table for whatever reason. Uh, and we're also playing with the Gauntlet's Code of Conduct, uh, which is a very useful thing and, and now rules all my play uh, on or offline with or without the Gauntlet. So uh, with all that in mind, uh, let us consider where the operation could take, which operation we could be facing today. Now, I think that, um, I think, Jason, that you are the only player that I have not asked to define the lead. So if you want to go to operation three and uh, see what, uh, whether there's something in, in the lead tab that attracts you as a logical or illogical, Continuation from last time. Okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> the other thing to bear in mind, I suppose, is that we still have an unseen um, reclusive fashion designer uh, right. who was suspicious. Um. Should we use uh, Sophia not being here as part of our story? Uh, the last one, someone or something has gone missing. Aha. Uh -huh. Find them or it before the conspiracy does. <laughs> I think that's fine. Do you want to select that one from the drop down uh, list? All right. Um, if Jim drops in late, then we'll worry about that when we get there. Um, Okay, so uh, let me go to, I think, I think Jason, it's also your turn to say who or what is at the center of the operation. All um, right. Now this could be Sophia, um, if you wanted to define her, um, or it could be that this leads you to someone else. Um, <clears throat> maybe, link, can I link them together? Because I would like to see the fashion designer what was his name? Ray Pereira. Um, I can't remember. I put his I put his details in faces and places. Uh, let's see, Rui Pereira. Yes, Rui Pereira. So maybe Rui Pereira has abducted Sofia, or maybe we believe that they're together for some reason. Okay, so so that sounds like you're going for a a celebrity as your who or what, because he sure. is famous. Mm -hmm. And then we can add some detail to that. We know you can add his name to the to, to the details slot next to that. Okay. Um, let me go to um, Abs. Let, where would Mick Cornwell, Cornwell like this this operation to take place? Uh, and the table with all the possible options is just uh, to the right of the the briefing. Um. So we're looking for Sophia as well as the fashion person. That seems to be it. Okay, I'm um, just scrolling along and looking. Um, are we and are we off the island? Oh yeah, this can be anywhere. You know, yep, this cool. is new episode, uh, new location. I think um, uh, it's going to be high society because of the fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And I'm just scrolling. Um, 
I'm going to say castle. I can't resist. <laughs> okay, right castle in. Uh, overwrite uh, the C table to far right with castle, yeah. and we'll we'll add some flesh to that in a moment. Um, and then let me come, Matthew. Um, what do you think the conspiracy motive could be here? Um, I would say it is a friction and conflict between. Uh, one vampire faction led by Rui Pereira and another vampire faction led by someone else of your choosing. Oh, uh, my I don't goodness. Know. Yeah. How interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, well, select that from the drop down then and we'll fill in the detail shortly. Yeah. Um, and finally, let me come back around to Jason. What is the most likely, though probably not the only conspiracy threat? Let's see. <clears throat> I would like to see. I want to see vampires. Let's go to the bottom of the list. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. And that was plural vampires, wasn't it? That you, you, oh, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All the vampires. All the vampires. You see all the vampires, young, old, or ancient. Okay. Um, so uh, we've got our outline. Um, but I do want to give you, because uh, I don't think we had time at the end of the last session just to do the uh, the after action debrief, because uh, you pretty much had to race away. Um, so uh, on the other rules tab, you'll find turning down the heat. Uh, and I just need to know, uh, did the team achieve the stated objective of the operation, which I think was to destroy the fountain? I go with that. Did the team neutralize a significant member of the conspiracy or one of its feet? I don't think so. You scared her off but I don't think you neutralized her. Um, and the general is still in play. So I don't think, uh, I don't think I can give you that one. Uh, and you did not grant a vampire true death. So I'm, I'm going to reduce heat by one, uh, not a great deal, but it's better than nothing. Um, uh, your heat's not very, you're still, you're still kind of significantly below the radar, it seems. Um, and also, uh, what it says in there is that uh, if the team achieved their objective, then every operator automatically reduces their stress by one before the next operation. So everyone reduced stress by one. Uh, and you know, that's particularly important to Dev because Dev is, is, is developing a habit of sailing very close to the cracking edge. Um, so Dev is going to be on, start the game on four stress, a mere bagatelle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, let's let's do a bit of investigating. But before we do a bit of investigating, I think I want a cut scene. Um, I think I want a cut scene in which um, where where Mick does this castle overlook? What can we see out of a castle window? Um, a body of water, um, and it's sort of body of water on one side and a forest on the other side kind of thing so it's kind of near the shores of a loch or this maybe it's coastal something. yeah more coastal yep. yeah so it's 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 at that boundary between water and land okay um uh outlined silhouetted against that window as we come back from it is a figure Dev, what tells you that this figure is dangerous? Sorry, there's a, a figure from where? Uh, there's a figure silhouetted against that uh, castle window. What tells you that it's dangerous? Mm, silhouetted from inside the castle. Yeah, we're looking, the figure is inside the castle against the window. Uh, all we can see is a silhouette. And it will be a, oh. a, 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 you know, an indistinct silhouette, obviously. Yeah. It's a plain, okay, it's a, pl a plain figure of a person. We do not know the, uh, their gender. And then they just sort of got their hands folded at the back, you know, gazing upon the scenery outside the castle window. And um, when they turn sideways and begin to walk off camera, um horns begin to grow <laughs> into the back <laughs> like really high um and, and his gait remains normal but you can see also that sort of hiss there 
gait remains normal, but you can see that their hands are becoming more uh, meaty and clawed. Um, Christian, um, we then cut to the face of some assistant flunky goon, I don't know. Um, what do they say? Um, hmm. um, something like, uh, the heretics have found us. They'll be coming for us now, master. Yes. Yes. I, I was going to have them say something, but I'm not now. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Oh, amazing. Uh, okay. Uh, can I just add one more detail? When you can. You can see, you can see that, the, that the, 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 uh, the terrifying figure has a scarf. So when you talk profile, you can see the flowing scarf. Okay, um, I'm just trying to relate that now to yeah. Okay, I get that. Okay, it's oh, so well. you can lampshade something if you want to. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm good. I'm going nowhere with that yet. I, I, I've written down scarf. Okay, so um, the celebrity in public favor. He's very famous, so he's in public favor, but he is reclusive. Um, uh, let me go round to Christian and ask you to frame an investigative scene that could add some detail to what we know about Rui or the operation. Okay. Um, let's see, what do we want to be seeing? Oh, no, that's not it. Uh, is there a spot on the keeper for that or that should just make that up? It, it's just, you, you're you just gonna add some okay. stuff to the who okay. and what, yeah? Hmm. Let's see. This could be to find something out about Rui Pereira. It could be to find out something about what happened to Sophia. I don't know. Right. We were talking about uh, the castle was part of high society. So I'm thinking there's going to be a fashion show at the castle. Let's see if you can find anything out about that, shall we? Okay. Okay. Um, so who are you talking to about this or, or what what persona are you adopting to have this conversation with someone who might know this stuff? I think I'm taking on the persona of like a um, sizable buyer for a, uh, you know, like a, a department store chain in Europe. Um, and I'm trying to figure out where this party is, where this show is and get an invite there. Okay, so talking uh, to some official of some sort. Yeah, I'm I'm imagining um, somebody uh, who stepped straight out of the Devil Wears Prada, right. uh, who is saying, "Yes, darling, it's going to be the biggest show of the year, undoubtedly." But as with as so often with Rui, it's all going to be terribly hush hush. Well, I've got to I've got to get there. We've we we uh, need his stuff on the on the on the racks, you know, come fall. You really believe he's going to go with, with a, 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 a department store? We're, uh, we're opening a bunch of high-end boutiques, uh, you know, other capitals throughout Europe. Mm, interesting, interesting. Well, and that's where I get you to roll the dice, please. Okay. So you are rolling with expertise because you have both uh, disguise and insight. So okay. uh, do you want to add your stress dice? Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, five, not the highest. The stress is not the highest. Then uh, on a five, you can ask me a question um, about this. Uh, where is this show going to be? Well, we know it's going to be in the castle, don't we? Yeah. Um, but um, shall we say that in the grounds of the castle, there'll be a kind of uh, a great tented... Uh, arena set up for the show itself he's okay. terribly private I, I i don't know anyone who's ever even been to dinner with him yeah so there's going to be a tented uh, arena outside uh i mean arena's a bit grand a tented uh area where the fashion show will take place okay. yeah 
scribbling that down. Uh, let's go next to Mick. Mick, what do you want to find out and how are you going to do it as you prepare for this? Um, I think I'm going to do Mick's uh, usual sort of um, reconnaissance using the digital uh, digital intrusion um, research stuff and just and get um, get a schematics of the place uh, plans that stood us in good stead before um, I'm not sure how good the Wi-Fi connection will be out of the castle so whatever I can scrape now but definitely any floor plans or got or grounds plans anything about access or and all the history, just something along those lines. Okay, so uh, I think that's definitely within your expertise. Do you want to include the stress dice to in increase your chance of success? It's currently uh, sitting on a mere two stress. No, uh, no, that's okay. I'm I'm okay with what expertise and the middle one. Yeah. I. I'm not sure if if I got the old. I'll find out. I guess when I roll, right. I'm not sure if I've I've got the old roll uh, roll for your party. Um, uh, it's instantly stirring hair. Is it's um, is is the link in the lines and veils? Okay. Oh yeah, that moved. That moved. I see a six. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? Okay, so you can ask me two questions. Any two questions about this layout. Um. Or if you wanted to, you could define two things about this layout. Yep, okay. Um, I'd like to know about uh, any underground bits of the castle, uh, dungeons, catacombs. Um, um. I can tell you that the castle um, dates from the 1100s um it's it's on the coast in portugal um it dates from the 1100s um and it was once a royal prison uh and the it's interesting that you can you can read this stuff in the various bits of research you do um but it's like no one has updated any history. This this is a history written in the 17 or 1800s about it. No one has written about the castle since. But yes, the sense you get is that there are extensive dungeons uh, and a prison was uh, beneath the castle in its original form. Does that seem like a reasonable answer? Yeah, and I'm guessing there's no gift shop. Um... Okay. Sadly, no. What second thing would you like to know about? Um, I think just the like the garden and landscape, maybe like and in relation to where the like if there's this um, was it like a marquee, giant marquee sort of thing, in relation to where the rest of the castle and entrance points would be. Okay, I think what I can give you is that you crack the events uh, company that's setting all this up. So you've got plans of, you know, this is where the models will be changing. This is where, you know, the trucks will arrive three days before and so on and so on. So uh, what I'm gonna give you uh, is I'm gonna give you the uh, itinerary for the event company and their layout slash plans. Does that seem fair? Yep. Oh, I've typed that in capitals. Forgive me. Um, um, but you also rolled a six, of course. Um, so what is it that frightens you, Mick, about this? Um. I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of like uh, scared, excited. It's like quite exciting that there's a fashion fashion show, and like I'm into that. That seems like a level of excitement to be going potentially 
breaking into a Portuguese uh, a formal gardens fashion show, but knowing that, like, knowing that in all my digital intrusion history, there's not many places where the the history of something dries up for 200 years, like this much. Like, you know, usually there's a bit more you can scrape. I'm pretty good at doing that sort of thing. That's pretty unnerving thinking about that, just that blank, that yeah. blank slate. That really scares me because I'm so used to being able to find, like, given enough time, pretty much, you know, at least something about everything. But this is, this is creepy. This void is really creepy. I'm scared that there's something there that's, pretty powerful to have managed to achieve that okay would you roll for stress please okay um... so the green dice and you want it to be two or less to avoid stress going up okay boo <laughs> stress goes up um and uh how does stress manifest for mick i've forgotten um, it's, it, he just, he gets just really like bored and listless. He's cause he's a real excitement junkie and he's just really like, he just, and he's likes to talk to people and stuff. He just gets really withdrawn and he just kind of maybe he overthinks it. He's just dwelling on this. What the heck? There's nothing for 200 years or so. That's not. And now there's a fashion show there. That's not. That's not what, that's crazy. I don't know. I don't understand. And it's really like discombobulating him. I bet it is. Um, would you also mark Intel for your, because you rolled a six? So there is a benefit to rolling a six. And uh, finally, we come to Dev Sinclair. Uh, what does Dev want to know about? And um, how do we see her on screen finding that out? Um. So this, this is a so this is a fashion show by a very rich fashion designer, um, and lots of you know uh, hoity toity people are there. Uh, how about um, and because 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 the people who are attending are hoity toity, it means they're all, they're all convinced of their own self importance, and there's a diverse range of armed escorts for everybody all around, right? And I think what Deb does is she uh, tries to. Uh, look into um, look into the profiles of all the armed escorts there, uh, and see if there's uh, there's if there's anything that sticks out that will allow her to gain an, an, an upper upper hand. How is she gonna edge. How is she gonna find that? Because I I because I'm looking at her uh, at her skill set. What will you actually see her doing to try to find this out? Well, um, I guess fieldcraft, meaning her knowledge of uh, all armed militia. Okay. PM yeah, the, PMCs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that that's fine. So, so yeah. this is hitting her her network of contacts. Yeah. In as the, well as her knowledge field. base. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see how that goes then. Uh, I'm going to give you expertise. Uh, do you want to include your stress dice? Your stress is going to be on four. I will be giving you a chance to seek relief from the horror shortly. I, th so I think know. for now I will I will be using express uh, stress. <laughs> so just the two dice. Yeah, let's just, let's try it. Rerolling, we got a one and a four. So uh, you get one piece of it. What what do you what do you want to get out of this? You can get one thing out of this investigation. Um. I get. Uh, do you want? I, okay. I'm just thinking. Do you want to know the uh, the security company that's been uh, booked to to provide overarching security? So you might have some idea of their modus operandi, or do you want to know who, whether someone you know is going to be on site? I want to know whether someone I know is going to be on site. Fine. What's their name? Um. Their name. Okay, let me work. Let me work out a name in, in a bit. But the idea I have is someone who uh, also used to work for the um, the intelligence uh, community or the you know black ops community, 
<clears throat> and this is a uh, this is someone who we didn't see to eye to eye, disagreed with, and no, in no, fact, I, 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 what I'm going to suggest to you is that you leave that in the ether. All right. Until all right. you get up close, because if okay. if if you gave if you'd had two pieces you could define, I'd let you define something about them. But right now, all we've got is someone Dev knows is going to be on site. All right. Yeah. Uh, and how okay. that goes we can determine in play. Yeah? Is that sure. right? All right. But one of the security is going to be known to you. And yes. we'll know you. Yeah. Okay. That can't go wrong. That can't go wrong at all. No, no absolutely no. not. Um, now, you're not very rich on Intel because because you lot have rolled so few sixes in the last two sessions. It's kind of scary how little Intel you have. But do you do you want to use any of this intel? And I'm looking particularly here at Dev and Mick yeah. because poor old um, Christian doesn't have any intel to spend. Um, but do you want to spend any of that intel defining an obstacle that you will face in the operation? Something, uh, what do you want to be seen doing that could be cool? Describe an ob obstacle that would frame that. Or do you want to hang on to that intel and spend it in play? I think we should. I think at least. I think each of us should spend at least one now, so that we don't end this campaign sitting on a fat stack of intel. Well, the the choice is yours. So so go on, Dev. What are you, what are you thinking of spending that on? You could spend it okay, on more facts. So you could spend it to add detail to the this person you've defined, if you wanted to, or you can spend it to define an obstacle. Ah. Uh. I will spend it to define an obstacle. Okay, and what do you want that obstacle? Again, operation three, uh, the obstacle will be, let's see, obstacle will be a, how about there is a, there, there is a section of the of the castle that is that is heavily that is heavily fortified, um, but I and the rest of the team know how to dismantle it. Oh well, we'll find out if you know how to dismantle it. Uh, <laughs> the, the obstacle then that I'm going to write in there is um, castle is very well defended and protected dot 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 yeah because yeah. I, I what i what i'm seeing is you're set up you're setting yourself up to to need to use intrusion i think am i yeah. interpreting that right yeah okay yeah uh and protected by sophisticated security there we go yeah, you know what? Let's let's lean towards that. I like the idea that um, instead of heavily fortified, I don't want it to be like uh, you know six inches of steel or concrete, but definitely something with heavy security that will take a bit of expertise. Indeed, so indeed, so. All right. Okay, uh, mark off one of your intel, Mick. Do you want Done. to spend some intel now, or do you want to hang on to it to spend in play? Um, I've just been reading up on it. I think. Uh, given we've now got a, co a cool obstacle, I think it says uh, it, it, in play I can um, spend it to uncover the nature of the beast and stuff like that uh, and vulnerabilities and stuff. I think I might just um, make sure I spend it on that um, because, um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I'm going to hold on to it for now. Fine, fine. Um, so uh, let us let us cut to uh, Portugal. Um, and what do we see of Christian uh, when we cut to Portugal? Um, are we on site yet or are we? I, I, I've come to you to, to ask. Okay. Um, hmm. I think I'm at like the village at the foot. Maybe there's these, uh, I'm picturing this castle and the lake and the forest up in the mountains. 
uh, uh, so maybe there's like a village or a small town at the foot of these, these, uh, you know, these elevations. And um, maybe I'm on the phone. And I think what I'm trying to do, I guess, maybe is planting the seeds so that this oppo this uh, this other vampire faction will kind of know you know I'm sending an anonymous message to them uh, this is this is where Pereira is you know to try to bring them in to you know create a distraction so we can get in there and get Sophia that's what I, maybe that's more than you're asking but. Um, I, I, I think that's slightly ambitious um, yeah. um, how how would because you know you can't ring up a vampire faction mm -hmm. how how could christian have tried to get the word out um of this is the place to be if you want to you know we know there's going to be some friction so you don't need to set that up okay yeah um yeah i'm thinking mechanically what am i trying to do here um maybe it maybe nothing to beyond that then just maybe providing the fiction to show how we're you know going to get caught between these two factions of vampires fine um, i don't know if there's anything else i'm trying to do no i'm i'm very happy uh for us to um to to flip that round and so the audience will see someone uh observing christian through binoculars yeah um okay. and then scanning up towards the castle so we know it's not the castle watching you somebody else is watching you yeah okay, okay. um uh let me go to dev um the village doesn't have much to offer in the way of a safe house but i am interested for you to tell me where it is that you feel safest here mm. yeah let's call it the safest house on on offer Sorry, uh, just say, um, just to define the safe house. Did we say where the castle is? Like what country, what territory we're in? We're in Portugal. It's Portugal. in the mountains. Um, and it's up there overlooking a lake, forest and grounds behind it. And at the foot, uh, uh, down down uh, at the foot of the, the, the mountain on which it sits or the hill on which it sits is a village. And the village oh. is probably reasonably well you tell me i don't know i, I was going to suggest it was touristy because of the lake but i don't know maybe it isn't i would say that there's a there's a there's a here um there's a fisherman's tavern um and that fisherman's tavern is sort of like an open secret among the vampires and the community is a place that uh provides refuge but simply poses as a casual drinking establishment but underneath the floorboards you know a secret hatch or whatever you know, that's where we make our, our, our safe. Okay. Spot. So, yeah. so the, um, we come to you in the, um, the basement below a fisherman's tavern. Yeah. Yep. Um, and therefore the other bit of this question is who's vulnerable. So, so everyone nearby is vulnerable <laughs> they come after you okay um let me go to mick mick what reassures you about this safe house um the age of it um the like it's it's solid it's obviously been around for a long time uh, as long as the castle at least it's obviously stood against or, you know, manage to stand against anything in the area for a while. It, it looks, um, you know, it just looks like it's that people care about it and that it's solid and that, 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 that people have put effort in over many years to make it safe. Um, okay, I've written it's stone built, well kept and seems really secure. Yeah. Um, Christian, why isn't it perfect then? um the safe house why is it not perfect mm. um i mean i think it sounded like from what uh, what matthew was saying that it's kind of known to a lot of people in the community so maybe it's not as secret as we would hope right um
it's not as secret as you'd like. Um, the tavern keeper stores stuff down here, dot, 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 yeah? Okay, uh, there we go. Um, I do want to ask you uh, which benefit, now you've gone with heavy weapons so far as the benefit. I'm just curious whether you want to uh, reconsider the benefit of the safe house. So what have you brought with you? It could be automatic weapons, heavy weapons and explosives, or tech toys. I'm thinking tech toys. I think we don't want to do a lot of fighting this time uh, with nine million vampires running around. <laughs> Um, what do you guys think? I'm getting a nod from uh, from Mick. What about Dev? Yeah. Tech toys work for you, Matthew? Yeah, tech toys work. Okay. Tech toys and explosives. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'd forgotten. I moved explosives to be technical rather than heavy. Oh. Um, so, uh, so uh, always good to have some C4, I always think. Um, available if worst comes to the worst. Um, so, how how is this going to be set up? So we know we've got a layout, and and that is a great. I will just uh, I think I will share this uh, per, per chance. Um, yeah, let me. So, because it would help, I'm sure, our millions of viewers, if they knew that this is um, this is Rui Pere Pereira's uh, castle. Yeah, uh, I think we've got a good sense of that. Thank you for that one, uh, Abs. Um, how are you going to do it? You know, you think Sophia's in there. What happens next? You know, what's the plan? I think maybe I'll infiltrate in with, you know, there's going to be a bunch of uh, fashion people come flying in. I'm thinking on like, helicopters, so or maybe limousines driving up, you know, into the mountains. So maybe I'll infiltrate that into that on that group of people, and then at some point we anticipate there's going to be an attack by this other group of vampires, or maybe they've infiltrated also. I don't know, but we'll find out. That's what I'm imagining. Okay, so so Christian thinks he can get he can blag his way in. Um, how does that how does that play for Mick? What are we what are we seeing Mick doing in here? Yeah, I um, I definitely think that given we've got all the schedule and itinerary, there'll be a lot more people coming and going than normal. That we can do some either blagging or covert entry or both because because of the disruption. Um, from my understanding is there's not been this level of uh, out outside. Um, interaction with the castle for hundreds of years this no matter how well prepared they are this will be a shock to their system there will be a lot of people with kit and this is not this is a big this is a big show so potentially we could we could like blag also we could talk to if we feel like we want to do a pincer movement and someone wants to come in another way we could talk to the locals the fishermen to see if there's like a entry from the water maybe we do a pincer movement depends how we feel but I think, yeah, we mm -hmm. take advantage of the the hustle and bustle. And if it's, I'm guessing that um, the, a potential time for us to strike, if not anyone else, is at near the height of the fashion show when everyone's distracted. Um, um, and so we want to maybe think about the timings for that. And if we want to kind of be going in around then and, and, and using cover or making <laughs> something as cover. Um, so I, that that sort of I think that's that's quite a sensible path. Um, okay, so so a couple of ways in it seems you could either try to con your way in as maybe a guest, uh, or the suggestion could be that perhaps you can get in on the back of of all the events organisation. Dev, what's your thinking at this point about getting on the site? Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I think. Because this is a this is a high society thing, the nature of the armed escort is that they're gonna try to look like they blend in. You know what I mean? Because you know how these rich types they want to have their heavy security, but they don't like the idea of looking at the armed help <laughs> being conspicuously the armed help. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pose as one of them, but that won't require me to use any fancy uniforms or any like, you know, I just have to 
look like I have a, a, a decent dinner jacket with a tactical vest underneath or whatever. <laughs> you know, that's what I need. Okay. And that's how I'm going to make my way in. So um, a simple disguise is what you're, you're putting yeah. to Yeah, I mean, it's not my expertise, but I'm... Uh, this might be a little bit bargaining on my part, but I'm hoping to leverage field craft in this. <laughs> what I'm doing. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think you're going to need some uh, to call on a contact. Ah, let's do that. Because it, 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 this, this is some way off your beaten track, uh, I think, in terms of disguise. Um, All right. And unless the idea is to, is to, again, pair up with Christian and ride on Christian's coattails. But Christian, were you thinking of... Um, conning your way in or, or going, you know, as a guest or trying to get in as, you know, one of the help? Um, I think I was going to be that guy introduced the, uh, the buyer for this uh, department store chain. Um, Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that would provide some cover for Dev conceivably. Uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, I certainly maybe it'd be better mechanically for maybe I'll, if, what if I have a contact that can, provide the proper credentials or whatever for the two of us to the invite the invites and whatnot okay so call um, on a contact um yeah. dev I goes had, as, i had a guy doing that earlier you uh, did you did mr smith i think is his name yeah yes, mr that's smith. right the shoemaker so yeah i'll make a call to mr smith to okay. get us the proper papers um so so that will cost you a, a point of stress but you will get uh a good copy of the invitation. Uh, so you may not be on the official list, but you have the paperwork you need. Um, and Dev, th as long as you turn up looking your usual elegant, dangerous self, uh, you're not actually disguised at all. You are a bodyguard <laughs> for Christian, yeah? Yeah. Um, you know, Jason, Jason, we need to spend more time in all games together, just you being like, you know, wheeling and dealing and me being your arm desk. <laughs> Works for me. What about Mick? <laughs> what are we seeing, Mick? Oh, you are muted. It, bound to happen. <laughs> Good to get out of the road. Um, I'm wondering if I can... If, if we've got some convincing invitations, um, I'm wondering but we're not on the guest list. I'm wondering if I can add us to the guest list electronically and that we are um, a, we are a buyer for an extremely large um, retail of uh, clothing retailers um, and there, and, and another like fashion designer or fashion journalist slash designer like I don't know fashion fa part of the fashion coterie and and the bodyguard and we've got some we've got some very convincing looking invitations we are actually on the guest list okay and okay. we so so the idea is that Mick is again going to just be one of Christian's entourage um no I think I'm just uh we're just we're just a bunch of people who have arrived together, but not necessarily. I don't know. Like if it, it, maybe I could. I I'm not ruling that out. I was just suggesting I was like a fashion journalist or a fashion. Um, I, I guess what I'm what I'm because Christian is spent and now has the shoemaker has come up with two invitations, one for him, one for Dev. Um, oh, okay. I was wondering whether you wanted to ride on the back of that, or whether you wanted. Do you want to do the the digital intrusion to put yourself and the others? Sure, the I'll just do that, and I'll just be a fashion journalist or fashion, okay, okay, a fashion at Easter of some sort. <laughs> okay, so uh, so you clearly have the requisite expertise to hack the events company and get yourself on the list. So, do you want to include a stress dice? Stress is only three, after all. Yeah, I better. I'd um, <laughs> it'd be good to. It'd be good to have our name on the guest list, I think. Um, okay, so I get to use expertise and I'm going to use stress. So that's three dice. That's three dice. Okay. Oh, oh, will you look at that? If only two sixes were worth more than one, 
Um, so, <laughs> so this this goes perfectly. You know, it, this is doing something else. You succeed brilliantly. The GM will agree with you what extra benefit you get. Yeah. Um, but as you are as you are hacking the system, you realize just how much money has been spent on this operation. And just how many very, very, very rich people are going to be there. And some of those rich people, they're on your watch list. Suspicious rich people are on, because that's your kind of um, uh, anti-capitalist, eco-terrorism. Yeah? Yep. So, so you are going to roll for stress, but you're also going to get one intel. Um, and then you can tell me what benefit you want from all of this. Okay, uh, I'm going to add intel. I'm going to roll uh, stress. And what am I wanting? Oh, it doesn't. You're matter. wanting a. You're wanting something less, three or less. Okay, <laughs> three. Oh, there's a five. Okay, so stress goes up by one. Um, oh, that's weird. On mine, it said. Has it moved now? Yeah, it was three because I. Yeah, um, this this is why roll for your party is is not my dice roller of of choice under normal circumstances because it's a little flaky. Um, it, it, it 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 there's a build of tension and then it settles. Um, so stress is that what it's doing? Is that is it kind of all right? So stress is going up. Yeah, it does that. It does that. It happens to me too. Yeah, yeah you're not you're not hallucinating. It's not. Yeah, I was. It was three for sure. I was going. Oh, it's three. Great. Yeah. and then it's but it is five now. And, <laughs> okay yeah okay i'm adding stress um it, it, it knows when you're relieved and then <laughs> oops <laughs> yes. um so okay so stress has gone up um I, i'm noticing it's just coming up to the hour so i'm going to suggest we take our first break if we could be back at five past the hour and after that i will just ask you how you if and how you want to seek relief from the horror before the op starts okay so give that some thought i'll see you at five past the hour um, so we're back from our break, um, and and just looking at the current uh, state of the characters, uh, Christian is on two stress, Devereaux is on four, and at six she will break, um, and Mick has shot up in uh, the first hour of play to four stress as well. So um, let me come to Mick first. Mick, would you like an opportunity to seek relief from the horror, and if so, what would you like to do? Oh, you are muted. <laughs> um, just quickly, well, um, from the previous, uh, from the pre at the end of the last session, there was something else I could get from the my infiltration. There was well remembered, well remembered. Um, uh, can I get a backstage pass, not just a ticket in? Can I have like an access or, or performers pass, you know, like so you I can kind of go a bit more places than others? I let, okay, let's 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 yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Let's assume that part of the conversation with because you had quite a, a long and pleasant conversation with some of the generals goons last time, didn't you? Um I think that that they are attending the show uh, and maybe that's what led you back round to Rui Pereira um, and I'm going to let you have picked up one of the backstreet one of the backstage passes that they said we've got these and um, left it beside a tray and you picked it up uh, so I'm going to give you that but I'm also going to have the general and his entourage on site. On on, on site, okay. Okay. Um, I, I don't know whether that plays into whether that is who um, whether that's who Dev knows on site, or whether there's somebody else she knows on site. We'll worry about that when we get there. So, um, is there anything that you want to do to seek relief from the horror, Mick? I, I feel free to correct me. I remember when we did this last time reading about it, <laughs> it was um, a very much a double-edged sword, unless I was mistaken. It was quite... Um, like it, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I, I'll read you what it says at the top of the move. When the, act, when the fiction allows and the GM agrees, describe how you reduce your stress. 
whatever you do, there is always a cost. To you, your anchor, or another operator. Life's shitty. Yeah, I, life is shitty, but I managed to get some intel, so I might just spend... Um... I might just spend one of those now to, to just go down one and then just see how I get on. And, and I don't, I don't need to confront any, uh, any, I don't need to be taking any drugs or doing anything else. Right. I'm okay. I'm, okay. Okay. So you can in the rules spend Intel just to sum up what you know and, and just get a grip on yourself. So, um, and, and we know that he was worried that there were gaps and now, now he's got a bit more information. Maybe he's feeling calmer. So yeah, delete one Intel delete one stress. What about Dev? Oh, um, Dev, between, between uh, the four of us, Dev and Sophia have seen, have seen some shit last season, <laughs> last, uh, season last session. Uh, so I think what Dev is going to do is uh, she's going to get drunk. <laughs> Fine. If you get drunk, so uh, reduce stress by one and simply roll one dice. Roll the stress dice, because it seems to me that we ought to be uh, dealing with the stress dice. Uh, and let's see what happens. It is a three and it is staying at a three. <laughs> <laughs> three, you're a nasty drunk and you're ashamed of yourself. Um, do you maybe say something to Christian? I don't know what, you know, just... Mm. Yeah, they they should. I think I think I say some shit to to, to Mick, actually. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and 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 you know, after the following morning, you're thinking, did I did I did I say those things? Yeah, I maybe won't, Christian I won't... is like, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, I won't get into the. I won't try to belabor it with details too much, but it's basically no, no. just. Uh, taking shit out on Mick for last session for, you know, sticking around with the guys longer than, you know, like, you know, sort of all the chaos that happened last last session. Okay, so one to three, yeah. nasty drunk, ashamed of yourself. You cannot use your expertise mm. until your stress goes up again. Yeah. So we know Dev's firing on all cylinders, um, <laughs> but don't remember to reduce the stress, right? Wait, sorry. Redu I can reduce the stress, right? Oh yeah, you always get to reduce your stress by one. Done, 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 done. Okay, right. come what may. Um, so um, everyone's slightly hyped up. Uh, I think we know how this is going to unfold. So I'm going to cut to um, Christian. How do you want to arrive? Can I do uh, reduce my stress too? I have something. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I was. Too. I was. Um... You know, we already kind of established that I've put my uh, my anchor as a target. So uh, maybe to uh, give that the fiction. Um, I think, you know, to answer your question too, I, I want to see us coming in on like a, a, a helicopter. So maybe we're flying in and there's those helicopter shots of, of uh, wide shots of the, of, the, of the beautiful lake and the castle and, and you know, different helicopters flying in and this, you know, luxurious tent uh, set up, you know, for the show and all that. Um, but I think he flashes back to th that that CD bar in Marseille that we had last session, where he was meeting with Sunday, and um, you know we we were talking about you know the smuggling operation of the general, and, and I got that information. But then I was looking around, you know, with my uh, keen observation, I noticed you know that my brother, my brother always uses Nigerians in his operations, and I see a bunch of white guys and. I noticed that, you know, one of them has those red eyes that we had in our first session, a, a distinctive of a vampire. And, you know, when I go to, when we go to leave, you know, I, 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 I got a big, we both have big smiles, but we look each other in the eye and our, our gaze is steely and cold. Um, and we hug and I, I whisper in my brother's ear, uh, I'll see you in heaven, brother. And that, you know, that's, and then I leave. So okay. maybe it tells us that maybe we're not so loyal to each other as we were before. Okay, no, that's good. So reduce your stress by one. I have added Sunday to the target list. Um, so and I don't, I don't need a roll because that takes me down to one. So no, they yeah, exactly. No, that's fine. You're, the anchor is is uh, you do need to roll because if it's a six, you get another oh. stress. Oh, oh, sorry, no, you can't lose another stress. Yes, yeah. I see can you, you get mean. intel on this one or not? 
Uh, but that's you, investigation stuff. You, that you, you can't. Get. No, you okay. can't. So yeah, there's really no point. No, there isn't. Okay. Um, so um, I, I'm going to cut then, I think, to Christian uh, in a helicopter with Dev. Um, uh, you know, was, and we've had that. You've given us the, the the kind of pitch. It's a lovely sunny Portuguese summer's day. Uh, helicopters coming and going, and uh, down you come. And then I'm I'm probably seeing Dev. You know, kind of helping you get out from underneath as a bodyguard would, playing the part. Um, and uh, and you know, there is somebody there to receive you. And uh, they, they, you flash them the invitation, and they nod and smile, and and they usher you off into one of the first tents where there is a champagne reception. Yeah, um, let's cut to Mick. Mick, how is how is our fashion journalist arriving? Because maybe a, a helicopter's above his expense account. I don't know. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to um, find the tradesman's entrance, so to speak, um, where all the people actually working on this are coming and going. Um, uh, and I'm coming in to cover. I've got this. I've got a. Um, I've got an access all areas backstage pass. I'm here to cover the event. Um, I'm coming in early to do some. Uh, background staff. I've been uh, interviewing the set designer and um, it's a very innovative construction of the catwalk and the set dressing. Um, I'm also got to talk to the lighting designer um, because apparently there's quite uh, an interesting setup here. They're not just doing standard lights, there's some projection mapping and stuff onto the castle. So I'm here to do the background uh, in advance of then I'll obviously be covering the big show and I've got a couple of interviews with some of the um, designers backstage lined up as well but I'm I'm just uh I'm here really early to do that I've got my briefcase my laptop and and of course stuff. you have of course you have uh this would be a good time actually for the rest of you to uh to just clear your gear uh because you you know who knows what you'll need this time um and in the case of Dev and Christian I'm assuming that you are going in lightly loaded because you are in disguise um but so Mick, yeah, I, I normally I would require a disguise role here, um, but uh, but I think that because you've got the backstreet the backstreet backstage pass, I'm going to give you expertise to avoid detection to keep your cover intact. Okay, when you when you cross the security line, so you're rolling with expertise, and of course you can always involve your stress dice. Um. Yeah, I'll go for stress. Uh, okay, give me a sec. One, two, three. Oh. Um. See, that's just the stress didn't do any harm there, did it? <laughs> no, but the stress of the ch changing, I was like, on my thing, I had sixes. <laughs> and I was just about to go, yes, but it's okay, it's fine. It's a four, but uh, that's okay, right? <laughs> That's okay. Um, so on a four to avoid detection, your cover holds, you don't attract any unwanted attention. Okay. So you, you can wander about on site. You've got the badge. They give you a second badge that, that shows that you've been through security. So you are, you know, you're just a faceless member of the, you know, the backs, backstage cast at this point. Yeah. Uh, going undercover. Yeah. Okay. Um, you now, have... I you right. have comms, so you know what's happening to the other characters. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, just before we get too far, the last part of the objective, or the part that oh, says objective, God. can we, uh, just yeah. so we're all on the same page, establish that? So so far, I, as I understand it, we're here to save Sophia. Is that how you guys are seeing it, or is there something else we're trying to do? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah, I'm seeing some nods. OK. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. Thank, thanks for reminding me to write it down. I have to say that was what was in my mind. Yeah, uh, from from the off. But yeah, to save Sophia, because uh, you know she's there. Um, uh, so uh, champagne reception. Um, Christian, what what do we what do we see? What are you you know what are you doing? I think I'm looking all around, seeing how people are interacting with each other trying to get a sense of who's on which side. Um, so when things go squirrely, I'll know who to watch for and you know 
who's going to go against who and uh, just kind of get a sense of uh, how it lays out. You know, who's you're here. reading the room, really. Aren't reading you? the room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that's certainly uh, a role to investigate with ex with expertise. Do you want to include your stress dice? Yeah. I mean, you are so cool. So low. <laughs> uh five and the stress die is the highest well stress goes up then uh because the stress die is highest um but uh and and yeah your insight i think is where this is where insight plays i think and you can see a number of people who are um who are being overly polite to one another yeah um and uh and and you can see there's some dance going on here between various uh, people. So I'm not sure I can tell you those over there are that group and these over there are that group, but I think uh, when the time comes, I will allow you to identify someone as being faction A, faction B. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that's what, I, that's what, that's what you get. Um, there are some ordinary, you know, fashionistas here. Um, but there are some other people here or other, yeah, let's call them people, other people here who are behaving in that way. Um, Do I about, spot the general too? Is he there somewhere? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. The general is there. Um, uh, and I guess that I, that is going to require both of you to, to maintain. Oh, no, only you. He's never met Dev. He never really met Christian either. He met Sunday, right? He, um, it, exactly. So it's it's now a question of whether you are sufficiently different. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think I will ask you to roll to avoid detection. Uh, your disguise plays perfectly into this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll do the stress again, too. Oh, uh, my. A five on expertise. A five on expertise. I thought that was going to be because uh, uh, yep. expertise flipped late for me there. I was all set to steal another stress. Um, so yeah, that so uh, that goes fine. You're not you. You are somebody else entirely. The way you're dressed is differently. The gold teeth have gone. You know, it's not a problem. Um, by the way, I should remember to mark heat because you are now are on a new location. Um, so Mick, where do you want to go backstage? Are you looking for something particular or what? Um, I'm doing a pretty similar version of what Christian just did, but in a different location. Uh, I'm additionally keeping my eye out for any, um, I don't know, like clues as to what might be happening. But basically I'm doing the same thing, uh, uh, like, but I'm going to go into the backstage. I'm going to be looking at the area. And if there's a chance to be also kind of looking at the outsides of the castle as well while I'm walking around. But I'm just going to do a good reconnaissance with a similar aim. Um, but I'll try and keep away from the, I can see where the champagne reception is. There's a lot of activity. I'll just try and keep away from that. Um, and if I spot, if I spot the fashion, the uh, Rui, is it Rui? Yeah. yeah. If I spot Rui, I, I might try and interview him for, for um, <laughs> fashion monthly. Now, uh, what I'm trying to do is to is to uh -huh. is to map this against your expertise. You've got exper expertise in persuasion, which really requires you to be talking to people about stuff. You don't have field craft, so you're not very good at recce, um, and you don't have insight, so you're not very good at just putting pieces together. What's so, research? Is that research is really book work? It's just wading through a lot of data. Okay. Yeah. So, so what I'm seeing you is going around asking a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah. So talking to people, you know, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you are trying to play the interviewer, you know, interview the model interview, you know, someone, uh, you know, behind the scenes about what it, all of that stuff. So let's see what you can learn. So, uh, with or without stress. Uh, without stress. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Oh, well, one and a two. So, uh, do you want to? Um, you get the bare minimum. Yeah. The bare minimum 
is that uh, it is very clear that uh, there is only one obvious entry to the castle and it is uh, both guarded and those doors do not look like they went up in the 1100s. Those are some very secure doors. Uh, that's the only way in at the front. There is an access for deliveries at the back of the castle um, that is less well guarded but it is just as secure. Okay, that's the basic information you need. Get that for nothing. Um, but you also mark heat. Um, so I'll do that for you. Um, because um, one of the security guys comes up and says, when you're paying rather too much attention, perhaps to the castle, he says, the backstage area is that way. Yeah? Yeah, okay. No problem, my friend. Just, um, just having. To, I have to paint a picture of the scene, and it's such a wonderful location. I was just making sure I soaked in all the details, so when I uh, talk to Rui and um, do my piece, that um, that I've really got all the details. Apologies if I've uh, if I've if I've come into wrong place. Happy to go to go back here straight away. Thanks for helping me out. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Next time, just 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 look at the tape that says no entry. Okay. Understood. And you hear him speaking into his sleeve as you walk away. Um, so uh, I'm going to move to the to the to the fashion show unless somebody tells me not to. OK, OK. Um, uh, people are being, you know, very, very, very gently encouraged to move out of the champagne reception. Um, down uh, a, a kind of uh, a tented uh, corridor, really, to uh, to the largest of the tents, where there's a catwalk. Uh, there are seats uh, arranged around the catwalk. People are sat quite close together. Um, where did your invitation lead you to be seated, Christian? At the back or at the front? I or think do you we're at not want to go? I think we're in the back. Tour, you know we're okay. not famous we're not famous but we have a lot of money so we're here but we're not up front where the cameras are okay um uh dev you know there is there is um a seat for you next to your um to your employer your client do you want to take that seat or do you want to look locate yourself somewhere else my employer employer and client do you mean uh christian Christian. All right, just making sure that we didn't suddenly get hired and I didn't notice. So, yeah, uh, I'll take a seat uh, next uh, next to Christian, but I'm making sure that I'm always uh, looking behind him to see if there's anything going on. Okay. Um, now, I'll whisper to Dev. I'll say, you know, um, you know, it, it pretty much all eyes are here now. You know, when the chance comes, this might be the time to, you know, sneak your way into the castle and find Sophia. Or is it Sophia or Sophie? Sophia, isn't it? Yeah. Sophia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because um, as as we as we know from from the picture that that Mick painted, there is there is a, a a fantastic light show. There's an audio visual show that goes with this. You know, this is a big production, um, and so there is plenty of cover for those of you sat at the back uh, to leave the tent if you wanted to. Um, Christian, I get the feeling you want to stay there or not. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay here and continue to kind of, you know, read the room and see how the tension's building between these different groups. Okay. Um, so, Dev, uh, there is an opportunity here for you to leave the tent without having to worry about, you know, what, what, what's going on. You might have yeah. to worry uh, about getting to the castle because I'm sure that, that Mick has told you, you know, there is some security out there. Um, Mick, are you looking, if, if Dev decides to make a, make a try for the, for the castle, are you aiming to, um, to go with her? Uh, I guess we're talking on comms. I mean, what do we want to do? I have a feeling that they might, if there's going to be a hit, it might be sometime during the show because it's the time when everybody's here and it's the most embarrassing time if that's what they're trying to do 
or maybe if they're hitting the castle, they'll do it during the show because for basically the same reason, all the tension's on there. So I'm not sure, but the show goes for quite a while, but it certainly does build to a bit of a crescendo. Um, I mean, maybe we just wait and see what happens and then like sneak out when something starts happening. Or I don't know if we, I don't know if we want to kind of um, try and get ahead of the game. I'm not sure where they strike. Does anyone else have any, any thoughts One question on it? I have to ask, and please let me know if I, 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 if I should be ashamed that this question was already answered. Do we categorically know where we can find Sophia in this godforsaken palace? No. There okay, are. so no, so I think you, you do know that there are uh, an a, there's a there's a kind of medieval prison underneath it. All right, um, uh, you know we're not we're not with we're not with, uh, with with big intelligence anymore, right? So you know we can't do heat scans, we can't do any of that stuff. So oh, we're just no, going to have to go. Let, let 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 me remind you of call on a contact. Um, call on a contact could give you access to stuff that you don't currently have. You can always flash back to call on a contact. All it costs you is stress. All right. Um, and I mean, we categorically know that, 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 that when Sophia was taken, she was taken by these people. Um, I, I think that you are pretty confident that she is, she is a prisoner in this castle. Yeah. Yeah. We have, um, we have tech toys in our safe house. Does do. that include the kind of things you're looking for, uh, Matthew, you think? Yeah. Um, I would like to use the technology to do a, a deeper scan of the of the castle and just sort of like figure out uh, where to get Sophia. Because, you know, these we fight these vampires every day. We find them for a, a fucking long time. They can have their internecine squabbles all they want. Right now, the priority is Sophia. And to answer what uh, Abs was asking, my idea is that we wait to the chaos of the conflict and in the middle of whatever sort of conflict happens, we make our move to the castle, get Sophia and get, you know, get out of Dodge. That's, that's the way I'm visualizing this. I to, approve of Jason and or Christian's plan. To, to <laughs> add to that, um, I could potentially try some things like if we've got tech toys, if I can use digital intrusion to help with that. Also, I'm suspecting whilst the castle may or may not have like Wi-Fi or something, a production of this size, they'll have set up, at least for the show, they'll have set up. Yeah, a, a private network. Pri the, outside. There's, so there's, there's possibility yeah. of um, like stuff off the web if we need it. Another thing I, or, and or I could try and, I think it's pretty easy. I could, if I, I've, I need to have my laptop set up to be writing my article. I could hook into the um, the lights and or the sound or both if that's going to help um, generate additional chaos when the time strikes. Bunch of ideas. Happy to to help with any of those. Um, yeah. Okay. Let, let let me let me suggest something cool then. Um, why don't we cut to uh, to Mick in the in the press tent? Uh, uh, at his laptop, uh, carefully arranged so no one can see what's on his screen. Um, and then maybe up out of the trees come three or four tiny drones uh, who begin to uh, radar map the castle. Uh, and so we have an opportunity for a cool scene as uh, we see these tiny little drones come up um, and then on the screen in front of Mick, uh, we begin to see a, a 3D model of the castle begin to develop. Yeah. Um, uh, I love cinematically, I like, I like the idea that, that we see the camera like face at Mick and the drones come out behind him as if, you know, even though, it, even though it defies the sense of space and physics to have not seen the drones behind him prior. <laughs> Also, it's also highly possible that there was um, these drones were either being used or about to be used as part of the um, performance light show. A lot of places are doing that these days. They're like painting in the sky with drones. So, you know, if there's like X amount of drones painting the sky and four of them sneak off to, of you know, be. Yeah. yeah, I was only yeah. rolling my eyes because the ostentatiousness of it all just makes me sick. <laughs> and, and the whole point about having this on a sunny afternoon in Portugal is that uh, as well as the light show, there is natural light 
over the over the uh, catwalk itself. So I think that's digital intrusion. Let's see uh, you're using digital intrusion to learn something about the structure of the castle or perhaps Sophia's location. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to include your stress dice? Yes, I definitely do. <laughs> OK. I'm I, just going to look away until it's settled. <laughs> OK. Are you glad you looked away? Is it set? Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> OK, so I'm seeing a six on the stress dice. Yes. So stress is going to go up. Yep. Um, but uh, you are going to be able to ask me two things, or I'm going to give you two things. One, I'm going to give you the layout of the castle. And you can see in the middle of the castle, below the central courtyard, is what looks like a kind of, of, of beehive-shaped space, a kind of bowl-shaped void. Um, and you are seeing um, spaces around the edge of that void, one of which, two of which, let's have two of which, have a heat signature. Is it is it a bit like the setup of um, like a kind of similar setup to the previous uh, one where there was like a, a central uh, layer with um, subjects arranged around the perimeter sort of thing? Certainly. Think of it as a dome shaped space, probably about uh, 15, 20, 20 or 30 paces across at the base. It comes up to the level of the courtyard and into the wall of this bowl are driven spaces. Let's call them cells. Yep. Um, uh, and, uh, and in two of those, there are heat sources. I'll make sure, uh, Christian, Dev, are you, I'm sending this stuff to your phones, make have a look at it surreptitiously if you can. Much like the castle's history, there's a void at the center of it physically with something that doesn't look right. Um, potential location for Sophia. Would you say two heat signals or one heat signal? Look, two that are together where no, one of them they're in different things. cells. Um, and you can also, uh, and, and for your second question, if you forgive me uh, for filling in some details, uh, you can see that there are some, that there's a network of passageways around this, underground passageways that seem to lead from inside the castle buildings into a network of passages that then connect to this bowl shaped space. Yeah? Um, there's your two questions worth. I think that's that's fair, fair go. Um, but you also get the mark intel because you rolled a six. Uh, because the six was a stress die, you've already increased your stress by one, so there's no roll for stress. Okay, so the plot thickens. Um, what it sounds like is you want to wait until something happens at the fashion show. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I think, given you've spent more time in there now, Christian, I think I need you to roll to just maintain your cover. Okay. So roll to avoid detection. I'll give you expertise because of your uh, skill set. And you I include the stress die if you yep. want it. Yeah. Uh, oh. Five and <laughs> yeah, fooled us again, didn't it? <laughs> uh, nope, it's a five on the uh, regular die. Fine. No one's going to bother you until the end of the show or until something happens. Dev, you just sitting there in the shadows, waiting, standing there in the shadows, waiting to see what happens, or do you want to do anything before it happens? Well, um, I just want to be ready for when chaos breaks out and try to use that as my opportunity. So, fine. yeah, fine. Um, the show reaches its crescendo, its climax. Um, and, you know, the models are all on the catwalk. The catwalk, uh, you know, rises in on some pistons and, and, and rotates out over the, the, the watching crowd. Uh, there's all, you know, it's, it's amazing. The light show is fantastic. Um, and then it rotates back, lowers back down, 
uh, the models stream off at the back. And for the first time, we see Rui Pereira. Um, there's a picture in Faces and Places, an elegant older man, flowing gray hair, a rich gray beard, uh, beautifully groomed, um, wearing his trademark scarf. Um, uh, and uh, and he, he walks out uh, onto the, the catwalk to, you know, loud applause. But again, Christian, I'll give you the, the insight that some people are clapping politely. Um, and those people are located, it's, though they were mixing in the uh, reception, it looks like they're all sitting on one side, yeah? Uh, and Rui makes a, you know, in, in heavily accented English and then in good French, uh, he, he, he thanks everyone for coming. He's so pleased people have enjoyed the show. Um, and then there's an explosion. Um, there is an explosion beneath the catwalk. What do you do, Dev? Because you're our reaction force here. Oh my God. Um, I would, I, what do I, what do I, what do I, we feel the explosion. You, what see, do we see? You, you see it and feel it. Do you wait, do you wait to see what happens or do you act? I absolutely do in fact wait, even though I, I, I'm going to regret this. <laughs> <laughs> um, Christian, what about you? Explosion. Uh, I think in the, I, I'm picturing the the regular people, you know, fleeing and panic. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna you know get into that crowd, find like a a, 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 a shadowed little corner, and peel away my outfit to show that I have a security guard outfit underneath. <laughs> uh, nice. Maybe, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe have a contact would that would allow me to do that? I think call on a contact would yeah. absolutely allow you to do that. Um, I'm thinking probably um, a criminal. They can okay. they can get they can provide stuff. Okay. okay so by all means, be, spend uh... a point of of, of stress, um, and you are now you now look like you are a member of the security, even yep. down to the the little badge on the lapel right. and the 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 clumsy ear radio that they're using. Right. Yeah. And then I'll start making my way to the castle. Okay. I, say, I think it, I think it's go time, guys, on over our radio. Dev, do you stay or do you go? I go. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, so you join the 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 exodus out, um, and what it probably looks like to the to the people around you now is that Dev is the is the guest, and the the event security team are helping get her out. Um, mm -hmm. What about Mick when you hear this? Because I have to say the press tent empties as soon as that explosion goes off. Yeah, I'm uh, grabbing my laptop and listening to, um, listening to the running commentary from the folks in the tent. And if it's go time, I'm heading out and I'm gonna try and see if, um, uh, I can give them any uh, extra intel. I'm guessing I might be a bit closer to the castle if the press tent was out the back. I'm just seeing if like, um, if the gates have now opened and like people are flooding out the castle to help with the attack, maybe at the back door or the front door or something like that. Okay, let's have you roll to investigate. I don't, I, I can't see any expertise playing here. It's just looking to see what goes on. So you're just rolling the middle dice, stress die if you want it. Okay, actually can I, is, would, can the drone? Can I just be quickly look at the footage on the drones from the back door versus the front? Um, Fine. Uh, in which case, let's let's include expertise for digital intrusion. Yeah, I'm just basically trying to see. I'm guessing that if the attack, if the things attack, that that maybe they're open the doors and people are coming out. I'm trying to see if that's correct. Um, I'm going to go with the normal dice and expertise and see what I can get off the drones. I'm going to look away so I don't see the settling. Ah, uh, there's a six. So right. you get you get loads. What do you want to have happened? Um, I mean, I honestly think potentially both doors will have just opened and troops or secu I would, security slash troops are spilling out to 
to join the combat. Um, okay, so so let's start with that one then. So I think yes, the main doors of the castle, gates, doors, they're gates for God's sake. They they ease open. They're clearly hydraulically driven in some way. They're not just castle gates. And a whole bunch of guys, you know, black uh, operational guys uh, with tactical harnesses and submachine guns are jogging out um, and deploying. Yeah. Um, at the back, the, the, the tradesman's entrance, for one of the door, uh, doesn't open. But the two guys who were guarding it run round to the front. Yeah. Um, so so there's there's one answer to your question. What's happened? Uh, do you want to ask me another question about what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I relay that um, I relay that data via the, the uh, com links um, and ask the team what like is there a what door do they fancy hitting? Do you want to do you want to like oh. Uh, Actually, which door is closer to the, the nest or the void or the... Um, the gate is the... is Because it goes into that courtyard under which this this void is located. Okay. Yeah, and I see myself going right in through that front gate. When that tactical team comes out, I slip in. in well, my, well, well in let, let, let me... Let, 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 let Mick finish asking his questions. Okay. Okay. Um... I'm just going to see if, uh, like, did did I notice what the quick, like, if the drone's looking around the gate courtyard, did I notice what the closest entrance to the void nest thing is? The simplest from... way to get to the top of it yeah. is through that gate. Okay. The quickest way to the passages giving access to it is through the back door and down through the castle. Yeah? Yep. Um, you rolled a six, you gain intel. Um, but sadly, you've just seen that the general and his entourage have seen you. Would you roll for stress, please? Yeah. Trouble, trouble. Oh, was I unmuted? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a two. Whoops. Stress, stress doesn't go up. But um, but the general, you 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 know, there's there's a goon who's come out with the general and you see and your eyes lock across all this chaos and he turns to the general the general looks and points they're after you mick what do you do um i'm just going to run away i'm like guys are you if you're going in the front <laughs> i i might try around the back i got to get away from this oh my god <laughs> Okay. Because I uh, like yeah, I'm yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay. Are you are you fleeing for your life? Um I don't know. Like how are the general and his troops? Oh, I think they're gonna kill you, yeah. But are they more concerned ooh, about ooh, the conflict ooh. that's breaking out around them? Oh like, no, they... they're really concerned about you. You abused their hospitality, Mick. <laughs> What's fleeing for your life? I mean, you can, I mean, you can flee for other things, but I think it's your life right now. <laughs> yeah. What, what's I d is what's the mechanical? It's it's a, it's exactly the same. Um, you you roll. I don't think you have particular expertise in this, but you can include your stress dice. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is it finished? Three and a two. A three and a two. So um, uh, the, the it's the stress dice isn't high. That's a good thing. Uh, so on a three, uh, two to three, you can escape, but the GM will tell you what or who you must sacrifice or leave behind. Shit, your laptop's still inside the press tent. Oh. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Um, and that dawns on you as you're in motion. But you will escape from them. That doesn't mean they'll stop looking. Mm -hmm. But you around the back of the castle, approaching that rear entrance. Meanwhile, Christian, um, I'm going to go to Dev first because I think we're getting into into realm of tactics here. So Dev, um, these guys are running out of the castle gates. The castle gates are open. As they leave, the castle gates begin to close. What do you do? 
So when the when the gates closed, um, they'll be they'll be on the outside. They're right should... towards you. Yeah. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to. Uh, are they, are they drawing guns or are they pulling fists? They're armed with submachine guns. Okay. But uh, they're not. They're not. They're not coming for you. They're gonna. They're going to where the explosion is. Okay. Um, I'll just try to run past them, and if they try to get in my way, I'm going to try to s avoid them by sliding under them, you know, uh, GI I, Joe look, style. I'm, I'm going to make it easier than that. I think that your field, uh, your field craft allows you to okay. pick the right moment. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I can so, read them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. As they fan out away from the castle. Uh, so you're rolling with expertise. Would you like to include your stress dice? This is a very stressful moment, so yes. Because <laughs> for the first time in some time, Deb is not the person with the highest stress. Please don't jinx that. <laughs> Let's see, uh, right? The die roller, we're getting uh, some expertise. We're going to uh, stress and we are getting the regular die. So let's reroll. That's a two, a four and a one. And the four is on the stress dice. So what I previously said is no longer true. Um, yeah. Dev, increase your stress by one, but you slip. You, uh, you and Christian can slip through those gates yeah. uh, before they, they close behind you. And you can hear gunfire and chaos outside in the grounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, almost exactly what you were hoping would happen, I think. Um, uh. Let me cut to Mick. Uh, you've got round the back of the castle. You are safe for the moment from the general and his goons. Uh, but there is this entry to the castle. Are you at all tempted? Uh, yeah, I know they're in, right? You guys are in the courtyard. Yep. Okay, everyone's in. Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try coming in the in the back. Tradesman's entrance. Pincer movement. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna. There's no one guarding that door anymore, right? They, you saw them run to where yeah. the where the the uh, everything's going pear shaped. I'm gonna just try opening the door. Okay. Um, now this 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 is the kind of this is the door that Dev was going to have to open. Uh, so this would require intrusion expertise. So uh, unless you can think of a call and a contact to give you a piece of equipment that would allow you to crack this with expertise, you'll be rolling without expertise. Is it like, I mean, if it's anything like the front door, it's actually electronic on hydraulics. Is oh, it the same or different? I, yeah, go on, I'll let you, I, I'll oh, just because I mean. I'm that a nice guy. Sure. Wrong with expertise. Okay. Well, I don't, You've got I don't, stress. My, my, actually, I, my hypothesis was going to be that it is an old door, and then sometime down to 200 years, they're like, we got to update this door. And the only idea of updating this door is to make it controlled wirelessly or through wiring, <laughs> which means that it's actually more vulnerable now than it used to be. <laughs> Roll with expertise, Mick. Okay. Back in the old days, we and used keys. <laughs> include the stress dice if you'd like it. I'm going to. <laughs> oh, Mick uh, has become so reckless. He's finally beginning to look excited. Okay. And if, if I'm not much mistaken, that, that stress dice now reads five, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah, Wait, has you, it settled? Has it settled? I, I think it has. I think it's settled by now. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, uh, you you get through the door, but you are going to have to increase your stress by one to five. If it goes up again, you will crack. Describe the circumstances of cracking, and then you become mine, all mine. Can I intel it down rather than that? Or? You can immediately intel it down. You can just get out. I know a lot of stuff about this. I'm not as shit scared as I appear to be. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I think. Okay, um, we can trigger uh, like secretly from the horror too on the fly, right? Oh yeah, yeah. If you can, if, yeah. If you can find a way to 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 build it in fiction, absolutely. Also, uh, yeah. I, I just I'm not sure when the best time, but I did promise I'd spend at least one intel on finding out about the opponent. One of those ones. I remember at the start, I said I'm definitely going to do that. I'm not sure when the best time is when it would help the party, but that's up for grabs. When you confront if... one. Okay. 
yeah because otherwise you you're kind of speculating aren't you um um i i i am just looking at the clock it is almost five to the hour i'm thinking that with um dev and christian slipping through the front gates and uh and and mick you know sweating as he tries to get through this door at the rear that might be a good po point for a commercial break so shall we be back in our seats on the hour fine i'll see you then okay back from our final break um our, our third player is 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 on their way um but yeah we left that with dev and christian having slipped through this main gate uh to the courtyard um, and you have on both of your phones, you've got the three dimensional map that uh, that Mick Cornwell managed to construct using the, the drones. So you can see a route to a set of uh, a, a spiral staircase that will take you down and then into a complex network of tunnels. Yeah. Um, um, all we've done, Abs, is I've just summed up where Dev and Christian are. Um, you all have a map showing the internal spaces of this castle. Um, and you, you all know that the way to get down there is to find that spiral staircase and go down and then work your way through a labyrinth of passages uh, underground. So unless anyone is very keen to separate, keep separate, I'm going to have you all arrive at that spiral staircase yeah um so there you are you've all arrived at the spiral staircase um the uh the map says you go down here but it must be said uh mick that uh the there's there's an obvious passageway going to this uh underground prison um but there are lots of other tunnels around that that seem to move, you know, they, they seem to run up and down and around. Um, so like secret passages or? Uh, difficult, difficult, because all you've got is voids. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's spaces. It's a con, it's like spaghetti down there, uh, apart from this main passageway running to the, uh, to the uh, bell-shaped uh, prison area. Um, Dev, I'm going to put you at the sharp end unless you want to be at the back. Okay, so Deb, is, Deb mm -hmm. is heading up using all her combat attuned uh, skills to try and ensure nothing's going to leap out the walls at you. Um, of course, these passageways are lit with real torches. Um, uh, Christian and uh, Mick are following up behind and you can see at the end and it's a dead straight passageway that leads to a, uh, a, 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 a literal kind of uh, jail gate with, with bars. With bars. Um, and beyond that, you can see a dark space. Um, Dev, when you get to that, uh, to that set of bars, mm -hmm. you can see that you are looking into what you assume is that big void space, yeah? Ah, uh, the abyss at last. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, it's too dark, you know, the torchlight you've got shows you the space, but it doesn't show you the far side of the space. But it does show you that this gate is open. It could, could just be swung out. It's got a latch on it. It's got a bolt. You could unbolt it uh, and in there, and according to um, Mick's map, the heat sources, one is on the opposite side from where you come into this space and one of them is over there at about nine o'clock on the clock face mm -hmm. so um so what do you do dev um first of all uh holding uh the whatever light source we have in front of us um i stick uh dev sticks the sticks it into the void uh don't know what happens there but um after a while seeing that um nothing nothing will be illuminated in this manner uh, just uh, just you know soil yeah Ugh. um she tosses the light source or hands the light source over to uh christian or mick and says 
here goes nothing and just walks through the void. <laughs> let me just let me just put this to you, Dev. Um, I, I'd like you to roll to investigate using field craft. All right. No, I'm not even going to make you do that. I'm going to say this. This seems too simple. This gate has got a bolt on it. You know, everything you've seen so far is high quality security. And yet this appears to have a bolt on it. So I just I'm not going to make you roll. I'm going to tell you that. OK, do they, do they want us in there? <laughs> yeah. Can I um, kind of be shining a, a torch around, checking the walls to see if there is like a loose stone or something? I, I think you'll find uh, a, a flashlight or head torch in the gear list if you want to select it. OK. And I, one other thing, too, um, if I could take a moment to trigger uh, secretly from horror, uh, learn something more about my anchor. Maybe <laughs> we find out that my anchor has been captured. Uh, so well, maybe, I'm imagining maybe his body is that you know being drained of blood, or you know wow. whether he's alive or dead. I'll leave to you. Let let let's 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 uh, let's see how that goes, shall we? So you will reduce your stress by one. Okay. Uh, I will increase him to on the run. Um, uh, which means that something has happened to your brother. Mm. Okay, you don't know where he is. Okay, um, and then I roll a. Six. And then you roll a dice in the hope All you right. get a six. I'll roll the stress die. And it's a one. It's so one plus. You get the same result, okay. uh, but so stress goes down, and Sunday is more than in the crosshairs. Sunday is off the map. We don't know where he is. Um, and did you mark torch headlamp uh, something? No, but I will. Because um, I think uh, that once you put a decent light on uh, and you yourselves are illuminated, over there at nine o'clock, if you will, you know, to your left, um, a cry comes, brother, is that you? Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 um, I'll go over to him. So you walk across. Yeah. Yeah. Despite Dev's kind of, this is all going too easily. Mm -hmm. Dev, do you follow? So to the nine o'clock is, 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 sun, is Sunday and to the, to directly in front of me is the void and the bolt. So you've, you, so you've got this, this large space. You're at one side of it. On the far side of it is where a uh, mix map suggests there's a heat source. There's another heat source over there to the left, which I think we've just identified as Sunday. And between you and it is just, you know, a, a 30 paces of Earth. You know, I'll keep Christian company. I do want to go there, but I, I, I don't. I. If, if if I hear the if I hear the voice of Sunday, then I'm I'm you know I'm going. There. You're on it. Okay. What yeah. about Mick? Do you follow them or do you go and investigate the one that's straight the heat source that's straight ahead of you? Uh, there's two. So there's two in the chamber now, and there's two. Sorry, the <laughs> the um the the um. So that's one each for the heat sources. Um, you know, I might just say, look, I'll, I'm going to, um, I'm going to hold here. I'm going to hold this or see what, and I'm, I'm going to be there and I'm going to try and find based on the, the void space, um, map where like, is there like a kind of sp spaghetti labyrinth passage near us that maybe doubles around to another section of the void, okay. et cetera, and just okay. kind of be doing that. Okay. Um, I'll let you roll for that in a minute because I think they're going to, you know, it's only 10, 15 paces away. So both of you are walking across this uh, space with a torch um, towards where Chris, uh, where Sunday, and you quickly spot him, you know, with uh, his hands are on some bars and his face is through it. Brother, help me, brother. Um, Dev, um, I will let you roll for field craft. What are we looking at here in field track? I'm pulling up a little I, bit. I, um, I, I think that there is. I want to see if you notice something, Dev. All right. 
Okay, so you're rolling with expertise. Include your stress dice if you want it. Nope, it's just a one and a five. Okay, so on a five, I will tell you that you f you you feel a vibration in the a vibration something. It's like the 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 earth just near your foot moved. Oh dear God, um, is it a trap? <laughs> and that Christian is when you feel a hand grip your ankle. What do you do, Dev? Um, I whip around and um, try. Uh, no, you know what? I grab Christian with my with my bare hands and start like try to hold on to him. Okay. Um, uh, what I can tell you, Christian, is when you look down with the head torch or the flashlight, whatever, you see a gnarled, clawed hand has hold of your ankle, um, and you can see another hand reaching out of the earth as though to drag something out of the ground. Um, this, this is an inappropriate time to mention this while, when you describe gnarled hands, but I want to say, just to clarify that when I do, when Dev does grasp Christian, it's with all the latent sexual, sexual tension <laughs> between them that I could possibly muster. Okay, um, I, 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 can, I can go for that. Um, so let's have, I think, I think that this is rolling to do something else. Um, but I am going to give you expertise because I think, you know, this is this sounds like, you know, military physicality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've just realized you can't use your expertise. Oh, no, your stress went back up. Your stress yes. has gone up. It is now available. Sorry. Go oh, ahead. yeah. Sorry. I forgot to mark that. Yeah. So uh, with expertise, stress if you want it. That is definitely a stress situation. Whew. Okay. Rolling, 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 rolling. Five, five, one. Oh, five, four, three. Lying dice. Five is five is on the stress dice, so stress automatically goes up by one. But you you drag Christian uh, slightly off his feet, but out of the claws. Um, Mick, you 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 had your head down on your phone trying to work out the route around this spaghetti. Um, but then there's the. I think there was a cry. I don't think that all happened silently. Uh, what do you do when you see what's going on? Um, so, Dev and Christian are clutched together on top of the sort of middle of the soil in the chamber, and gnarled hands are reaching up and grabbing both of them. Grabbed Christian, uh, Dev has pulled him free, and 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 and. I'm assuming, Dev, that you're backing off towards where Mick is, or not. Yes, and as I do that, um, my eyes are also looking in the direction of, of where Sunday was. So you can tell me now if Sunday's still there. Or Sunday is still there. <laughs> Sunday <laughs> is still there. Hideous monstrosity has taken this place. <laughs> no, Sunday, Sunday is really there. And have we seen the other... Who's in the other... Heat, I, who's the other heat source? You haven't got close enough. You're like no one's paid particular attention to that one yet. Once Sunday made his presence felt, everyone was interested in Sunday. Uh, okay, I'm going to look at the other um, the other heat, the, heat, the, heat the, source. The, yeah, the, the difficulty is the other side of this space is too far away for the light you've got. So unless you want to gear up and add a flashlight. Yeah, I'll do that. Fine. Uh, so gear up with a flashlight and you will see a prostrate Sophia in another one of these small six foot by six foot by six foot cells. Um, okay. Can, do the cells look easily openable? Um, I think yes. They look like they're bolt. They're, they're, they've got a padlock. It's not some sophisticated technology here. Okay. I mean, I just, I yell out, there's, there's Sophia. Does she, do I see any response? No. Okay. Um, like we're all, we're all huddled up with, we're, we're sort of like all backed up Christian and I with Mick, right? Yeah, I've, I've, I've got you all back at the entrance to this space. Now, yeah. And are the hands keeping coming? Uh, <laughs> a, a, a figure is clambering out of the soil. Um, uh, I would describe it as um, 
twisted. I would describe it as heavy shouldered. I would describe it as hunched and animalistic. All right. Um, anyway, if 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 Mick's still figuring out, uh, I'll, I'll hold on. I was well. I was just going to say, like we're all in the same spot now. Is does one person want to get one heat sauce? I keep heat sauce. Does one person want to get Sophia? One person want to get Sunday? And one person grab the the a torch from the wall and start burning the or, or attacking the stalling yeah. of the the creature. Yeah, I got uh, Sunday. It's, it's, is Sophia awake? That is the question. She no. is prostrate. No. She She's is not prostrate. awake. And is not responding to, to mixed calls. Oh, God. Okay, all right. Um, so, like, if Christian's getting Sunday, one of us, the rest of the other two, maybe me should get Sophia because you're the best in combat, you're getting, right? You're going to get Sophia. Yeah, and you could, just because you're better in combat, right? And there's, I mean, there's yeah. torches on the wall if you want to get that. Should I be spending intel to see if fire is its weakness or what is something is that is that the time that we could be doing this uh can i can i just declare something and let's proceed uh dev is going to take out two pistols fire one at the lock <laughs> the padlock <laughs> i'm going to assume that's enough to break the padlock okay uh then and the then. other one at uh, the gnarled form <laughs> so she's on her back holding christian two guns okay. Oh. So, so it's one of these, you know, at right angles. Bang. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's have you roll to confront the conspiracy and its pawns with expertise. Yes. Include a stress dice if you like. Uh, I just need to check. I think I'm right in saying that you have uh, five uh, stress. Yes, five stress. So right, you could so... crack at this point, unless you I could. could. <laughs> Five, five, five. The stress dice is equal to or higher than uh, the oh, other really? dice. Equal to, dang it. <laughs> um, so your stress is going to go up. I will give you a last opportunity to seek relief from the horror. All right. If you don't want this to be your um, your uh, final kind of action. Yes, Remember, I you will can not spend let spend intel to reduce stress. Let's do it. Okay, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say your stress stays on five, but your intel drops by one. Just I, when I you did. wanted to work out what the weakness of a vampire was. Uh, I wrote it down already. I did all the... the Fine. the Fine. Uh, um, but, but that is success without... So I'm going to let you hit the vampire, but you didn't roll a six, which is the kind of sharpshooting you would need to shatter that lock. I'll give no. I'll give you a choice: hit the vampire or hit the lock. Wow, what a tough call! <laughs> uh, let us let's take the lock. Let's take the lock so that Abbott can so that Mick can 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 get in okay. the, into the action. So we see the lock shatter, uh, but the vampire looks at you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boy. <laughs> um, so, Christian, uh, the plan, as I, as such as it is, appears to be that you are going to make your way to Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, while avoiding the vampire. Right. Yeah, I think I see myself kind of, you know, uh, Dev is sort of in front, and I'm slinking around the back, and um, I go up to Sunday's cage, and I, you know, he's there, you know, pleading with me, I imagine, to let him out. And I'm going to pull out my silence pistol and say, uh, you know, go with God, brother. And I'm going to shoot my brother. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Oh, God. Oh. wow. Okay. Gee whiz. Um, uh, abs, you're sprinting across to the other side of the space, yeah? Yeah. Uh, to try and get Sophia. Yep. Um, and that leaves Dev and this vampire. So Dev, um, you shot at him or it, and that got its attention. Yeah? Sure, why not? Yeah. So, so what do we see? 
Uh, are you asking me? Because I, yeah. I can help. Out. Okay. I, I want to know what you're going to do. <clears throat> um, oh, I thought you were asking me to describe the vampire. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. No, I just need to know what happens. I'm sorry. I'm just very... I, I, uh, I, do, I don't want to forget what, uh, what Abs asked me, which was, uh, can you spend Intel to define something about... That's Earth? right. I will spend Intel to define something. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Do you want me to? Because, because I feel like I promised I would, and I've got more intel. But if you want to, you can. Please don't let me stop you. Go, go, um, go. I, I just wonder if you want to hang on to that last couple of intels or intel, actually, Dev. Just in I'll case hang on to it for it now. In. Yeah, I'll hang on to it for now. I want to learn more about this vampire from a narrative standpoint. I'm frankly surprised that you haven't spent that last intel to reduce your stress to give yourself a bit of headroom. But let me let me let me go to Mick. Um, now, oh, you, I can do that even even when oh, I'm yeah. not. Oh yeah. Hmm. Um. So, uh, Mick, you cannot have more vulnerabilities than deterrents. So the only thing you can initially spend on is another deterrent. Um. Am I okay? So sorry. Am I looking at the the beast? The beast. Uh, um. Okay. Uh. And so I've, are we, which, where are we? Are we, is this, I've got, which section is it? Sorry, I'm in the, I'm in the beast, but which okay. row is it? Can, can you see that I've, I've marked cat slash vampire up at the yes. top on row three. Yes. Currently running water is a deterrent and yes. the heading is a vulnerability. Uh -huh. You cannot spend on another vulnerability until you spend on another deterrent. So you now would go to the, to that one there. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's me? like they, they can have multiple things. Oh, and it, yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I get it. Okay. Um, uh, fire, for sure, because we've got torches. Select fire. So I'm now seeing Dev grabbing a torch from the wall, with her handgun in one hand and a torch in the other. Um, so fine. We have fire as a deterrent. So. Now we know that, Dev, what are you going to do? Uh, let's see. Well, um, vampire's out, torch is out. So I guess um, I try to lunge forward and use the torch to uh, burn. I, yeah. I was trying to go for the thesaurus word, but burn is like where my brain goes. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 think, I think burn is, is the operative word. So yes. you are rolling to confront the uh, the conspiracy or its pawns. You are rolling yes. with expertise. Yes. Um, I do need to know if you're going to spend that intel to reduce your stress, because I'm not going to let you do it post-roll twice. Oh, uh, that's right. You know what? Let's do it. Let us spend that intel. I think I can do that. Characters, spend okay. the intel, reduce the stress back to four. And, and now we are rolling. Expertise. Roll with stress or not, you tell me. No stress. <laughs> okay. A little calmer now, knowing. <laughs> That's a one and a three. Okay. Now, um, I now need you to roll uh, the first two failure dice. The first two failure dice. Oh, first two. There yeah. And... That's a one and a four. Oh, wow. You are so lucky. Oh, wait. One and a two. Yeah, you are so Again. lucky. <laughs> so, so you failed or succeeded at cost or after a hard choice. Um, the hard choice is uh, whether... Because it smells the blood from Sunday's cell. And the hard choice is... Do you want to keep it on you or will you let it go for Christian? So Christian's not dead from being shot, right? <laughs> no, Christian shot Sunday. Sorry, it's going for Christian. No, I'm letting it go for me then. Yeah. Okay. So so uh, the hard choice is it is now going to attack no one but you, Dev. Yes. Okay. So Absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to give you succeed at a cost. I am going to mark heat, not that I expected to play much more part. Um, uh, and uh, you, you, you do get it to step back. That it is afraid of that torch. 
uh, but it won't stay afraid of that torch for long. Uh, but fire is not a vulnerability. So you, you, you do not hurt it. Okay? Okay? So um, let's cut to Mick on the other side of the, uh, this prison. The, the, the door creaks open. Uh, there is Sophia on the ground. What do you do? Um, well, sort of um, pick, <laughs> pick wake up, <laughs> if that may, like start to pick her up to see if she's uh, uh, yeah uh, and if and uh, to, and I, as i'm doing that i'm gauging her chance of becoming self-supporting and if it's if it's high enough i try like just try and wake her up if i'm like you know pick her up I'm like there's no way that then i just you get around the shoulder and and she will stumble after you but there's no way she's going to get out here on her own okay yeah, yeah so i'm yeah i'm doing that i'm trying to t hustle Make out. your way back to the exit Yep. Um, Christian, what about you? You've just killed your brother. <laughs> a convenient loose end cut off. What do we see you doing? I think I will spin and empty my clip, hopefully into the brain of this vampire. <laughs> Let's try that, shall we? Um, okay. With or without stress? Because I think uh, you, know, oh, you are stone cold cool. <laughs> yeah. He is a... Uh, um, what was it again? Composed and muscular. He is. Yeah. He is. Whereas I am uh, cold and. <laughs> Here we go. And five, and the stress goes up. Yeah, stress goes up, uh, but you succeed. You you empty the clip. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, and and you can see bits of uh, you know this this crusty, dried corpse-like figure, uh, just blowing off. Um, but that doesn't quite amount to beheading. Um, so you've, you've done harm, uh, but you've not pushed it near its end. Uh, Dev, uh, it seems to have got the measure of the torch now. You can see that its eyes narrow as if to say, yes, you frightened me with that fire, but no longer. Unless mm. anyone wants to define another vulnerability, we are stuck with beheading, folks. I, I guess think every, everyone's looking at Mick. <laughs> well, I, it's I, no, it's, if it would help, it's no problem. If we, or if we think the beheading, I guess it, it's good to have two vulnerabilities, right? Well, or if you yeah. feel dead, I mean, Dev, we're possibly relying more on you in the combat. So are you, do you have something to behead them with? Are you comfortable with that? Or would well, I? Well, ye old, ye old uh, Katana from the last session, may be applicable in this scenario. And I would like to think, even though this is a much, you know, this is not exactly a granular crunchy system, that being shot in the head several times by Christian guarantees me some degree of opening to cut this motherfucker's head off. Oh, well, let's, let's, let's see. I, I've, I've even marked up the machete on your sheet just because I thought it was coming. Um, <laughs> so we're sticking, I just wanted to check that we're sticking with beheading. I, 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 team, I'm for happy now. to spend it if, if, if we, whenever we need it. But it seems like for now we've got a, a yeah. we've got an angle in, a, a pointy yeah. angle in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The um, other options I don't think would help us much better, anyways. No, yeah. you have to blow a hole in the ceiling to get any sunlight yeah. in here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so fine. Then, uh, then Dev, it comes back round to you. Christian has shot him in the head, and that's distracted him, giving you an opening. So go ahead. Yeah. Attack him with expertise. Include your stress dice if you'd like it. But now I need you to roll all three of the failure dice at the same time. All right, let's do it. All three failure dice. Let's go. So only the gray one isn't rolling. Okay. I am free. <laughs> wow, that's... Oh, okay. Ouch. <laughs> so, so you do some harm. You know, you attack it around the neck and, and you can see a gash opens. Um, but because the failure dice is better than yours, uh, there is a consequence for you. Um, you need to roll 1d6, please. Rolling 1d6 on that beautiful green boy. High is good. 
Six. <laughs> Four plus. You were lucky this time. It hurts, but you'll live. But also on a six, mark intel as you discover more about the war you're waging. <laughs> All right. Yeah? yeah. Scary, isn't it? Roll for stress. <laughs> oh, I'm also rolling for stress after that. You are also rolling for stress, I'm afraid. You did so well, you get to roll for stress. <laughs> this game is the best. <laughs> It's just no three. stress, no stress. So you but you have a point of intel. This thing can be hurt. You saw discomfort on its face when you slashed its throat. Uh, abs, you're working your way back across uh, this space with Sophia dragging behind you. Christian, what do you do? Oh boy. Um, I think I guess. I'm going to try to grab it and hold it so that he can chop its neck. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I think the way I'll do this then is to have uh, you roll with expertise um, because you've got hand to hand. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to treat this as cooperation. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, that could multiply the effects. So you're rolling with expertise. Include your stress die if you'd like it, Christian. Yes. I'm not going to make you roll the red dice because it's it's focused on Dev. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, four on the gray die. Um, oh, no, five. Five on the stress die. Five on the stress die. So that is another success that will count towards Dev's attack. Okay. But you, of course, will increase your stress by one. Got it. Um, Dev, I... Christian, this muscular, tall black man kind of grabs this guy um, and then hopefully setting you up. So you're going to get one success come what may, but go for it. Oh, you are muted. All I did was say, all right, in a very stressed tone. <laughs> I will remind you, you can spend that intel that you just earned immediately to reduce your stress. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Uh -huh. Go for uh -huh. it. Done. Done. And all right. Three failure dice. Uh, I forget what's the gender of this of the, of this of this vampire. Which gender would you like? Uh, you know what? Let's say it's a male. Fine. Yeah. I if think I might one. have used he earlier. I can't remember. All right. All right. So you're rolling everything but the gray dice. Do I know this vampire? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't seek, seek relief from the horror with by bullying a vampire. <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't even going to. Wow, who is the min master who thought of that? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> All right, uh, let's behead this, uh, this son of a bitch. Son of All a right. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's one expertise die, one stress, and one. Uh, regular die and three failure, three failure die. dice, then, right? Right. Are you going to change if you're for oh, me? Wow, yes, you that's are. You looking did. good. That's looking good to me. That's a six for you, which means that it, it it goes very well. You you strike them cleanly at the throat because Christian has held them. So Christian contributed one success. With that six, you have added another two. That becomes a total of four successes. The failure dice don't get near yours, so you don't take a consequence. And the head spins into the darkness. Ooh. Ooh. And Christian, the torso that you're holding just crumbles in your arms, leaving you dusted with ancient grave dust. <sighs> just as Mick gets to the other side of the prison area back where you are with Sophia in tow. I'm going to cut to leaving the castle mm -hmm. unless you want something else. No. There is chaos outside. Anyone who could has run for the hills. Um, there are vampires taking bites literally out of one another. Um, but there is, there is a figure you see uh, who, who emerges from the wreckage 
of the uh, of the 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 fashion show tent. Um, there is the shred of a scarf hanging round his neck, uh, and as he comes out, one of his own security kind of just stops and look at it, looks at him, because there are horns growing from the back of his head as he reaches down and drains the ghoul of blood. And you just see a, a patch of skin begin to regrow over the burned husk that he was. And that, I think, is when you head for the hills, as Rui Pereira seeks to regenerate. Um, I'm going to call it there unless you, you want anything else. What's well, what you? I want is to continue the story next in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> is what I want to do. Rui Pereira has to die. Um, <laughs> that can be the actual name of the campaign, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me the head of Rui, of Rui Pereira. Pereira. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, thanks for that, folks. Um, I'd like to do a quick uh, Stars and Wishes, Roses and Thorns, probably, given it's our last session. Yeah. Um, sure. uh, so uh, let me just get a bit of paper. Uh, just so you know, I can do a little bit, of, uh, I can actually do Stars and Wishes. Um, you know, past the the hour, you know, because you actually moved the schedule a little early for me. Oh, so it's <laughs> it's 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 barely midnight for you. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it's still twenty four minutes to midnight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm determined not to have you up before because at some point in these games you're going to turn into a pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> so, so so let me start with you, Matthew. Uh, any stars? Any wish? Uh, any uh, roses and thorns? Because we're looking back now, we're not looking forward. Um, wait, I'm still drunk with uh, I'm still drunk with violence. <laughs> I might have to get back to you on that one. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think uh, I do want to say though that uh, I I do mean it when I say I do want to play this game a little bit more, if only because I think I it, uh, not just for my own amusement, but I think like playtesting it has been very very interesting. Um, I can see you like that the milieu is super exciting to me and the mechanics for it are also very intriguing. Um, and so that's a space I kind of like would be really interested in exploring with other people. If only, you know, like if, 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 that, if that helps you make the game, you know, come closer to what you envision, you know, or, or not. Like the, the fun is incidental. <laughs> you know? No, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. I, I think what's in what's come to me uh, over these sessions is that three, even four sessions, doesn't really engage all the all the longer term mechanics, because I think there's some relationship fallout that 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 comes out of these early sessions that you would like to see develop. There's yeah. there's something about anchors, you know. I mean, thanks to Jason Christian, carefully, you know, cut his anchor loose, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I think it will be interesting to see how those relationships, the anchors, run along a long, uh, across a longer period. So I, I take yeah. that. Um, Jason, anything, anything you want to say? Um, uh, roses, thorns, or both? Which one would you like to hear? Start with roses, go to thorns. Okay. Okay. Um, roses. Uh, Matthew's always fun. You get, you get so excited in all your games, and you were that one today. You, you lived this <laughs> game with five stress, and uh, you, you all but died twice, I guess. So uh, that, it's always fun to watch Matthew going through his uh, his trials and tribulations. Walking the precipice. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Mick, uh, I really appreciate your your game style. Abs. A lot of the things you were thinking of doing, or that you did, were things I was thinking of doing. So I think we were. We were on the same wavelength a lot the whole game. Um, Alan, it's, it's a really nice game. Um, I, I, I think my uh, my home group might like it. I might actually run it for them. Um, they're pretty trad, but this game has it has all the trappings of adventure that you know it's common language that we all have watching action movies throughout our lives, and I think they can really grab onto that. And it's it's fast paced, and it, you know um, once you get into it, it's it's fairly easy as a player just to you know to kind of navigate through the mechanics and stuff. Uh, yeah, particularly when the GM spends a little bit of time in the first session explaining them better. Yeah. Thanks for that. Abs, any 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 roses, any thorns? Yeah, are they just the same as the stars and the, the Yeah, kind of... but you know, thorns, th you know, but feel free to thorn the system, you know, because because it still is technically in development. 
Yeah, um, okay. Um, I think uh, I think playing longer would be better. Uh, that sounds a bit facile, but basically I agree with you. And I, I really think that um, if we'd had that extra session, it would have, uh, I, I know it was completely, you know, it was, of course you needed to miss it. But I, I think in terms of thinking ahead, that was, if we'd been set up there then, because I could just still see us coalescing around the mechanics, because in a sense, this was, new to all of us, right? Because we're basically sort of early play testers for your plot, some sort of play testers. So I could even see, um, well, me and I think this session, I think, I don't want to speak for Matthew, but I think me and Matthew worked out we could spend our intel this session. And like, we looked at it like, so we could see, and that was just working quite well, getting better. Um, so I think this is definitely something that um, if you if there was a bit more time to, to, go, to breathe through it, um, of course, and now we know it. If we did, I would, I would, I would definitely, um, to echo Matthews again, um, like to play some more. I was really I thought it was great. Um, yeah. I thought we, I thought we um, uh, missed Sophia in person, but glad that we managed to kind of, as a group, tie all that up quite well. I thought that was pretty. pretty Always well done. nice, you know. The fictional Sophia survived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I realized I'm now probably just going to echo things that other people said, but yeah, the enthusiasm from Matthew is great. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I thought uh, Mick and Christian, yeah, I would, whatever that, that, like, I think that dynamic was, well, I think it was good for everyone. I think we could, we could start to see these, these um, um, narrative strands based on various, you know, action movies, as you say, and horror stuff mm. kind of together. We, we, we planted some good seeds and they, they blossomed. Um, and Alan, yeah, your, your care, um, and, uh, sort of experience and, um, I think, yeah, even especially care is the word like that you took with us and the, and the adventure and the, and I guess effort that you put in, I'm really respectful of that. And I'm really grateful. Um, it's been really, it's, it's been a lot of fun and like, yeah, I think definitely if you could play a bit longer or, or if you, you know, a second session when you knew things more would be, uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be real. Um, you, you, you would, you would, it would be exponentially improve the experience if that makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. Um, because I, 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 I've run this as a one shot when it's fine because it's you know, you just it's a one shot. Um, but that I think the sweet spot is somewhere after four and before eight, yeah. Um, because I can imagine it. I, 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 you're quite right. I think all of you began to get comfortable with the mechanics. And, and, and you're right, Jason, the mechanics are simple, but there's quite a lot that they do. Um, yeah. and, and, and seeing how all the bits of that fitted together, you know, intel, stress, uh, the, the, the meshing, I could see that gelling today uh, in all yeah. of you. So, um, so maybe four would, sorry, it's just to think aloud then if, Maybe because we were actually hitting the sweet spot, but we had three, so maybe four, four to six would be really, yeah. you know, like rock, rock and roll, or four to eight, or something like that. Yeah. I also, there's so many things I forgot. Like, oh my goodness, Sunday, like you and your brother, like that was amazing, and like, whoa, <laughs> like, like, ah, uh, I'm like, oh. Well, I'm no, we we all took a breath at that one, Jason. We all took a breath. What I'm what I'm disappointed in is that we didn't get to see the consequences of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for what it's worth, you know, if I was epiloguing out of this, um, later that night, uh, we cut to the darkness. Oh, <laughs> go just on. saying, just go you know, on. just I just want to leave that one, you know, you know, because mm -hmm. everyone wants season two. Um, no, I, I I hear all of that. I think I think that um, the mechanics, once you get into the flow of it, are pretty intuitive. But until yeah. then, it feels like a lot more moving pieces than there are, and I, I and, and I need to be careful as I'm writing turning yeah. the, the rules into a rule book that I'm clear about that. Um, um, so I just want to bring up like, because uh, Jason was talking about how he's been look, looking at running this, uh, if I understand correctly, for his home group. Yeah. But definitely, um, like like I said, I'm very interested in the system, intrigued, compelled by it, you know, would love to play more of it. And I think where I thread the needle on that is that I think I'm curious to see this game 
under other GMs. Like, don't get me wrong. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna keep. If if the door is open on your table, I'm going. But like, I want to. Mm-hmm. But in terms of my interest in this system itself, I would love to see it filtered through someone else's interpretation to like, uh, sort of get into that. And you know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, to thorn the system just a little bit, um, I think. One of the things that became apparent to me over these four sessions, or was it three? I forget. Um, is each character um, gets to choose all these specializations, and these specializations are very well defined. Um, but I also think um, individually, I think players struggled to figure out how to RP their characters beyond the uh, confines of those specializations. Um, especially because the cost, or rather not the cost, rather the bonus that is gained from expertise is so significant to the dice rolls that it almost disincentivizes playing out of your role. Now, if that's the intention, that's great. I can also, uh, that, that's fine. Because I can also imagine uh, a fourth or fifth session of this campaign where everybody's much more well-oiled that we're able to like really go like, you know, we're really able to self-assign each other into these discrete roles that overlap and cover all the bases of the of the op research. Well, but yeah, so there, that's it. Like, yeah, I, 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 to be clear, it is absolutely the intention that yeah. that, that, that you are pretty much archetypical uh, in these mm-hmm. roles, um, because I mean, yeah, it, it was it was a design intent, I guess, um, mm-hmm. but it does mean that that. You have to not, as a player, I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself in your heads now, as a player unfamiliar with the rules, you have to both try to come up with an interesting role play, say an investigative scene, but you also need to be factoring in, how do I, how do I link my particular expertise to the questions I want to answer into a scene? So there's something, yeah. I think it's quite demanding of players. In that. And, yeah. and I, you know, and, and I think in part that may be, I've got used to having players like you who can do this. I yeah. think, I think, oh, sorry. No, go on. no you go. Please. I was going to say that, I thought that mechanic um, was illustrated by, remember when, and it was, a, it was a combination of us all because Alan had taken time to describe the main doors as being high, like definitely not um, old, like new, like to have technology. So when I went to the back door, you know, I could sort of, we could, um, say that maybe there was some tech there and then I think Matthew you then sort of spitballed that in conjunction with me or whatever or all of us but you were going oh well maybe it's one of those things where actually they try to make and I've definitely seen this in real life where they just kind of add tech almost for the sake of it and it actually becomes like if you just had an old Portuguese castle door with a keys it would have been it would have been potentially way harder than just because they had some like crappy wiring that was really easy for me. So I think I thought I could see the mechanics there um, working in that forcing a storytelling, but then I do, I guess I agree with you, Alan. I feel like there's some experienced players here, people with enthusiasm and imaginations, not that other players wouldn't, but some, you know, if some players were a bit, uh, well, I don't know if they were not so feeling so vocal that day or shy or, you know, just weren't, you know, if it wasn't hitting that sweet spot, you know, maybe then that's more work for the, for you, Alan, or whoever's, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest work. to you, dear. I was desperately trying to keep a door that had to be picked because because <laughs> Matthew had set an obstacle, which was you know that they could use their intrusion on. So I that, that in, in my mind, I was trying to keep a door that would require a set of pick locks. <laughs> yeah, I think okay. So here's where I balance this. Here's the knife that I balance this on. I think when it comes to like the dis- the thing I talked about with the discrete skills to tune, I think. I think they are absolutely perfect for the op planning stage. Like you said, Alan, you said like it, it forces the players or it compels the players to imaginate like research and, and, and recon in a way that is pertinent to their skills. And I think that is always constantly super fun to imagine things like the way our characters would do them. Um, I think it's trickier in the, when we're on the field and we're all like, you know, okay, well, you know, um, I can't, if you if you had given me that door and it was like a lockpick thing, I would, I'd be like, uh-oh, what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> but yeah. 
Institution. And I had one other, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go, go, go. I was just going to say one thorn I had um, is, this might be a matter of taste, but um, in a lot of operation-based games, I feel like the players get sequestered into their own little mm -hmm. places. Like it's your turn, now it's your turn, now it's your turn. And I don't know what the solution is, but I really enjoy it more when there's the interaction between the players. So like yeah. today, I, I think it's a matter, there's only three of us and that's a big factor. Like you, I'm sure we all can tell the difference when you play a game with four players versus three there. It's a different kind of game. Um, so anyways, today Absolutely. I felt like we had more than interaction whether it's just three players or whether it's the fact that, you know, we've been together now for three sessions, I'm not sure, but I, I would say anything that would emphasize more player interaction would be great. Um, you know, that part when we had uh, in the second session where we talked about, you know, which player we like least and which player we like the most, and then had that interact with our um, re relieving stress. I, I, th I really, that moment was my favorite of the whole thing. Um, and I think, you know, thinking off the top of my head, maybe like at the start of a session, having a step where like you you pick out one of our conflicts amongst the group and say, how do you work at this out? You know, and letting the players have a floor to just everybody try to work out a problem and a sort of, um, yeah. No, I think you that's know, a nice an, idea. an interpersonal issue. You know, yeah, I like I like the idea a lot. What, what, what I'm but, toying with is that there is there is a secret leaf from the horror, which is about remind another operator, and and somehow, I I want to leave it open so you could involve any operator, but I think I'm going to rewrite it so it links to either the person that you like the most or you care about most or care about the least, and mm. then uh, you know it will it will offer. And, and I might make the the disadvantage slightly less acute so that the easiest one to go to is the anchor. The next one to go to is the history with the, the operator. And then the other ones are all deeply situational. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's what's in my mind at the moment, because I, I, I think you're right, Jason. I want to be, I'm surprised people don't go to that one more often. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you in the moment and reading it, I read it and I think about it and I have trouble grasping on to how that plays out. Mm -hmm. I, I got I, in, I several times as we played, I, I had that moment where like, maybe I'll turn to this, but I'm not really sure how to do this one. But I think if you voiced it, like deepen our understanding of your, you know, your positive relationship or deepen our understanding of your negative relationship, something like that. Yeah. That, yeah. Might solve, that might solve both or, you know, that might give us that and then also promote people using it. And then it would deepen that interaction between the characters that much more. I, I, I think that's the way to do rather than putting another phase in. It is to make that particular seek relief yeah. more sharply f focused on relationships. Right. Yeah. yeah, I in terms of thorns, um, I, I found um, I found the seek relief once I'd read it, and I don't. I don't want to be thinking I'm doing too much min maxing, but if my stress wasn't high, it, it just sort of. Other than it might have given me a cool role playing situation, which is fine, even if that popped up. But it just. I don't want to say it didn't seem worth it because that sounds too mechanical. But, it, but maybe it's touching upon the these, these the things that others have raised. Like if, if there was a bit more nuance, maybe or opportunity, a, a little less opportunity for. I don't know, like, uh, yeah, I, I could see that could benefit from some tinkering. It sounds like you're well on the way to that and there's some yeah. really useful... I, I am thinking of, of of putting intel in there as well. So there is there is a carrot as well as a stick. And then just um, one one thing I thought of, Thorm, oh, really quickly before that, I'd be really interesting to see what the number of players, I could see that change. I wonder if five could be good, but I don't know. Anyway, I, I think it's worth thinking about the number of players. It definitely made a difference. But I'd always wondered if five, for some reason, I guess you get less time, but but maybe yeah, if it was five yeah. people who had who knew it. I, I'm wondering if, if five people who knew it would be a kind of interesting number. But um, the thorn I thought about was, or well, not a thorn, but just a suggestion. With all the setup stuff, it's it's really interesting. And now I understand that. Because I remember I struggled with that a bit going, oh, oh I didn't realize it because I hadn't said something then and, and that's but once i got my head around it that's that's cool so i get and i know you were thinking about explaining and i knew you said you wanted to explain that more but also maybe because what you 
been doing is kind of going, well, someone already got the chance to do that bit. So it's someone else's turn this week to do that, roughly yeah. speaking, right? I'm wondering if flagging that in advance, and mm -hmm. I hesitate to use the word homework, but if I knew that, and maybe I could have thought about it myself, but if I knew that, oh, I'm doing, because they're really cool. If I knew that if I was doing that bit next session, I would either maybe spend a bit of time thinking about it or, and if I'd established a relationship with other players, which I, I kind of have now, and I knew yeah. that, I might have started a, I'm spitballing here, but I might have started a chat room in, in, in the discord or whatever going, Oh, Hey, I've got the, like, where do you fancy going? Cause I've got the, where is it this week? Does anyone have a hankering, mm -hmm. you know, cause I, you know, cause I, I could, you know, I'd quite like to, I'd love to go to, you know, I'd love to go to Portugal because, you know, or I've just come, come back from holiday from Portugal. So, you know, this would be amazing. But then I know you've yeah. got, does anyone, and I would probably, I wouldn't say, I, I might not, you know, life gets in the road. I might not do that every week, but I, it's something I would think about personally. And I might even reach out to like, you know, backstage. Yeah, players, not. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I have a question. It's just, it's just meant to be like, it's just 100% meant to be globe trotting. Oh Yeah. Well, all right, I mean, all right. yeah, I mean, yeah, yes. I mean, as as much as you want. I mean, I'm I'm playing this with my home group at the moment, um, yeah. And so far, we haven't we barely got out of London. Oh, because so they've chosen to stay put. You know, they yeah. They it and uh, I think they just feel comfortable. You know, operating in the same location. But yeah, it could go either way, Matthew. This is very much in the, this is very much in the wheelhouse of a of a big RPG book idea but like i wonder if there should be a lever there that says this is a game that takes place in one city and there's a game that takes place all over the place <laughs> and like you know and, and that would be really interesting because i was i was thinking you can really define the space like i was thinking what is this game if it, if it took place entirely in prague you know yeah. every time I you, mean, you, you, know. you need to bear in mind i got 62 pages <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. That's why. But exa that's exactly why I said it's, it might be too much of a big book idea, yeah. right? But certainly, the first supplement. <laughs> this, yeah. It, was this a Kickstarter? Can we per, can we support you or purchase a copy? To how does that work? Or um, I, well, the Kickstarter is finished, but the Kickstarter. Uh, I, I'm now speaking to the thousands of listeners, uh, but <laughs> the the fulfillment date is in June. So I'm I'm still hoping to hit that date uh, for the PDF, um, and uh, you know it, it it will be available in some form at that point. Um, so no, I mean support me by you know playing it. <laughs> you got my money, Alan. I'm looking forward to getting it in June. Thank you. I, uh... Okay, um, folks, I'm gonna I'm gonna close out there. I'm just gonna stop the okay. recording.